This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, we're strapping on our chaps and hitting the trails as we talk about city slickers. I'm Andrew Jupin. Hello, it's Steven Sadak. Uh, Eric Slickska. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris Cabin. And we hate movies. Welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. We're talking about Ron Underwood's 1991 film City Slickers. You know Ron Underwood. Oh, yeah. As director of Tremors. Uh, Way better movie. Which is crazy that it was a year before City Slickers. It it may be his only good movie. Uh, I, I haven't seen it in a while, but I will say I have a soft spot. For Heart and Souls, another oh, movie that he directed with RDJ. We will absolutely be doing like I. I look at his. I mean, we'll, we'll go through his thing, but I think we could do all of his films. Oh, you absolutely, you absolutely could, Chris Kevin. Absolutely. Let's keep going. Mighty Joe Young remake, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Adventures of Pluto Nash. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> and the film in the mix that I'd always seen the cover of, but finally went and read the plot synopsis, and it's a movie <laughs> about Usher getting a job working for Chaz Palminteri, who is, you guessed it. In the Mafia. Oh, oh yes. that sounds he, like, like a lot of fun. He flirts with Chaz Palminteri's daughter, and then Chaz Palminteri hires him to be this girl's bodyguard. Wow. As opposed to murdering him outright? That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't see the movie, so maybe, you know. <laughs> it's a dark turn for In the Mix. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is, I will, I will get right out in front of this. I've mentioned this movie Probably a lot of times over the years in, in one way uh, or another. I mean, but I Absolutely. will say, man, rewatching it. I mean, I have likely seen this movie upwards of 25 to 30 times. Wow. My, it was big uh, with multiple members of my family. But I will say I probably have not seen it since around like 1999, maybe. It was big in Amer- America. So- loved this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. this, it was a big one. I, I, I watched this last night. And I'm like, uh, to think that this movie uh, narrowly beat out uh, uh, the movie that won the Oscar that year, Dances with Wolves, mm-hmm. just a little bit less than uh, 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 um, Silence of the Lambs, which was a runaway hit, if everybody remembers. You're, you, this thing was in 60. 60- 60 mil of Terminator 2. <laughs> wow. this, this absolute uh, nonsense was within 60 million. Tour de force for the Academy to nominate a comedy and, exactly. and give it an Oscar. Yeah, insanity. Insanity. I mean, think about how like what we're saying right here. Like all this money and all this like, you know, craziness going toward a fucking total mid-budget comedy. Like a family yeah. comedy too, not like a big, you know what I mean? Big box, R-rated, you know, sex comedy, Uh you know, where kids are going like, you know, this is like for everybody. It's the perfect balance of that, Steve. You're totally right, because what this movie is about is for like middle aged men having midlife crises and dealing with it. And there's a lot of like, you know, adult stuff in that way. But it's also a thing that's like innocuous enough and Billy Crystal's being silly enough and Daniel Stern's screaming in a high pitched voice enough Mm -hmm. that children like me. And my siblings in the 90s were fucking obsessed with this movie. You know what <laughs> yeah. children are also obsessed with? Let me just hit play really quick. Oh, jeez. Oh, Coming soon to oh, theaters. No. Yeah, thought- it's the VHS trailer game. It's back. America's it's unreal. favorite oh, game no. about obsolete materials. I apologize. Mm-hmm. We took about so two don't- months off. I mean, there's. And you know why? Because you were under investigation from the gaming commission. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you know what? Cleared <laughs> of all charges. Here. Cleared of all oh, charges. Cleared, really? cleared of all charges. Well, I think I, I'm a not pending a appeal uh, going on. <laughs> Different things. You know, there there was a cash settlement awarded to me. I have to pay something out. There's a lot of ins and outs. We don't have to go into the whole situation, but. It is back. We're going to finish this We Hate Movies season in a big, bad way with the VHS fucking trailer game. I uh-huh. am your J-Master, Steven Sadak, and these are my clues. Mm. 
So, wow. <laughs> welcome to, back. To deafening silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> there is, uh, let me just get, catch everybody up on the score thus far this season. Andrew Jupin has 25 big points. All right. In third place, Eric Siska is within, you know, striking a couple of, distance. Striking distance with 41 <laughs> points. Wow. And that's crazy. Not terribly surprising. Chris Cavan has 49 points to be in the lead, but there's a lot of game left here. We'll see who goes where and why, ladies and gentlemen. So what oh, I'm going to yeah. do is uh, I, I took the VHS of City Slickers and I picked three trailers and I'm going to ask these guys a couple of questions. If you guess incorrectly within that round, you are out for that round. You can come back in the next one. F the score goes five, four, three, two, one. The first one is the J Master School. That's the one you really want to get. So that's that, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We're okay. old pros at this, Steve, you know? <laughs> All right. Uh, bro, you know, I'm a, I'm a about to be a two-time loser, and I'm, I'm ready to play your game. Mm, love it. He's uh, a loser and a boozer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that second part. <laughs> Maybe no. Maybe you'll bug. Maybe you're gonna find your smile this week, Eric. Maybe that's oh, I, I would. Ooh, I would love that. How that about be, that? Huh? That'd be great. Nice. I, I just have to bury one of you in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. Round one. Mm. Game Master's Clue. A nice. very stupid cyber thriller that centers around intelligence. Both leads were replaced in the even worse sequel. It is a very stupid cyber thriller. That centers around intelligence. Both leads were replaced in the even worse sequel. Wow. And this is 1991-ish? 91-ish is where hmm. we are. Hmm. Cyber thriller. Centers around intelligence. Both leads were replaced in the even worse sequel. So <gasps> oh, I got uh, Andrew Jupin. Is this Lawnmower Man? It is Lawnmower Ooh, Man nice. for five big hey, points. Hey, there you go. Nice. nice. Congrats. Damn. So, Steve, it was very clever because you were talking intelligence like that and not saying virtual reality. But then, dude, I remembered the monkey <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> who gets assassinated. Very so important. embarrassing. I just rewatched like half of that movie on TV the other day. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, the, you really got to remember that you know there was the sequel, Job's War, or whatever the fuck with yes. Matt Frewer. <laughs> you'll God knows oh, you you'll forget about so, Job's War. Yeah, so, so Frewer, <laughs> Job's War, man. So Frewer replaced Jeff Fahey. Yes. yes. <laughs> got it. Okay. We got to. That's on. That's on a stay tuned list. I think. Oh yeah. Yes. If, but we, if it's if it's available, I I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Beyond Cyberspace is part two. Yeah. And then is part is there part three? Did you just a... make up that the the subtitle for Lawnmower Man <laughs> yes, 2 is Job's War? I absolutely did. Uh so there you go. It was actually <laughs> called Beyond Cyberspace. <laughs> that that now that actually rings a bell. I was like, Job's War. Well, I never saw it. I kind of <laughs> like the idea of Job having a war. Yeah. Uh so that didn't happen. So all right. No, uh, that's round one. There's three rounds. So two more to okay. go. All right. Okay. <clears throat> round two. Game Master's Clue. Mm. A hyper stylized, hyper violent cop drama directed by the Predator's Prey. Ooh, uh, I'll read it again. All right. A hyper stylized, hyper violent cop drama directed, and this might be the biggest part of the clue, by the Predator's <gasps> Prey, Andrew Jupin. Uh, that is maybe the last Boy Scout? It is not the last Ooh. Boy Scout. I've got oh. Predator's Prey, though. You see where I was going? And then you yeah. got, uh-oh, you got uh, Chris Cabin. Is that Deep Cover? It is Deep Cover because Ooh. Bill Duke wow. yeah, is nice. murdered by the Predator. Nice. nice. Wow, that misnomer, you think Shane Black uh, off the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. You tricky little fucker with these <laughs> questions. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Gotta love, love it. it, dude. Okay, and then last one. Round three. Here it comes. Last one of the last one of the All thing right. we can, we can talk right. about city slickers, which I'm sure people are dying to hear about. Yeah, yeah. someone's yeah. yelling in their car right now. Uh, hey. <laughs> Game <laughs> Masters Glue, right. a beloved comedian's directorial debut. It spans decades and uh, sports some atrocious age makeup. Now somehow a Broadway musical. Hmm. 
a beloved <gasps> comedian, uh, Eric Siska. Is it Mr. Saturday Night? It is Mr. Saturday Whoa, Night from dude. Eric. Big five points for Eric Siska oh, pulling yeah. out fucking Mr. Saturday Night. Wow. Because, nice. you know, he went back, Billy Crystal yep. went back to the well. He's doing it on Broadway now. Jesus. And I was actually in my notes, I was like, I bet this fucker before he's cold in the ground is going to do <laughs> City Slickers 3. And I Googled it and apparently it's in the works. Oh, of course no it is. No fucking way. Yes. He want, there was talks about maybe having Tiffany Haddish in it. He should do uh, a, a revival, do Forget Paris, and do it at where the Knicks play, <laughs> and just do it on the on the court. Yeah, Madison totally. Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah Madison Square Garden. Yeah, just go. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, not the whole complex. I just mean with the the well, right, right, right court. there, right, yeah. right there. I here's something, a little something to tie us in. Mister Saturday Night A got, which is shocking. I would have guessed. I would never guess this. David Paymer was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. For, yes. for an uh, Oscar, an uh, wow. Academy Award nominated <laughs> David Paymer, which rules. But that, that does movie did, rule. But that movie did so poorly at the box office that Billy Crystal was kind of forced to do City Slickers 2. <laughs> so oh, that's yeah. why no. City Slickers 2 exists. So it's all connected, my friends. Wow. Oh, that's and, incredible. And he called in some favors for that Paymer uh, nomination, I bet. <laughs> he, pushed, he pushed that nomination a lot. What? Is that movie? Is he a game show host? He's like a Don Rickles esque loungy oh. comedian, and yeah. it's I, I saw that as a kid, like a, a trillion years oh, ago. Oh, really? I never actually saw it at all, no. but I recently saw like some stupid like CBS This Morning thing about the the Broadway play, and I'm like, this fucking. But guy, like, how man. on earth are we making a musical about a movie that nobody remembers? Like, why why is this what we're doing these days? Because if you're, I guess if you're a huge Crystal fan, Billy sure. Crystal fan, you are, you know, between the ages of 60 and uh, <laughs> expired. <laughs> sure. And those are the people that love to pack those matinees. Well, because also with Broadway, though, because he had, what was that fucking thing on Broadway? He did 700 Sundays, his what? big baseball thing. Okay. So he kind of has a little bit of like cachet in the theater community. Got so this it. isn't entirely surprising. Am I interested in it? Absolutely not. Got it. Uh, but I, I think it would be weirder if it was like City Slickers, the musical. <laughs> oh, it's oh, coming. Dude, One of get, these days. You know me. it's coming. So it would be like the war horse, that crazy fucking puppet. It's like oh, Billy Crystal on top of it. <laughs> you City get... Slickers directed by fucking... Uh, What's her face there? Julie it's, Tabor. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, I, I went to War Horse for the puppet. I did mm. not see the film. <laughs> uh, it was the puppet uh, at least impressive, Eric? Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. Yeah. They I was the puppet in the movie, or are they using real uh, uh, horses there? In the I, movie, it's real horses. Which is, oh. That's dumb. Yeah, no. the puppet you imagine was cool Benedict as hell. Cumberbatch riding a puppet like he, that. He's you, on a CGI horse occasionally. That sucks. Uh, but the most of the time, <laughs> it's real horses. I do hope in the uh, uh, inevitable City Slickers musical that they have a young boy playing Norm the cow, uh, <laughs> oh, just dude, like dancing yeah. around in a cow suit, <laughs> just like doing like "You saved me from the flood." Thank <laughs> you. Yep, Father. dude. It's just it's a little boy debasing himself yes. in a cow costume. Please. Please do that, please. <laughs> well, this is a big hit because we're in the summer blockbuster extravaganza as well. We should say, right? Wow, I totally oh, forgot about that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now, just to set the record straight here, folks, because I did not look at the precious release date of fucking City Slickers. Okay. The thing is, we try to when we say summer blockbuster extravaganza. Well, actually, this came out June seventh, nineteen ninety one. So this is fine. <laughs> but if the release date doesn't match up. We're doing it because they're big titles, big, big recognizable things. So big they're not movies. maybe like b movies released in the summer, but it's the We Hate Movies summer schedule filled with big blockbustery and, movies. But Andrew, you got to understand that is a correct mistake to make because it does it doesn't make any sense <laughs> that this <laughs> Woody Allen meets the Cowboys <laughs> like 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 to, for that to be the bit one of the biggest hits of any year ever. Like you imagine. <sighs> Something like this coming out now, like it would be, I mean, no. well, it, could it would be, be Netflix. Like, it would be straight to Netflix, and nobody would watch it. You would lean into the family stuff in a different angle. There would be no, like, kind of divorce esque stuff going no way. on. No well, look affairs. At, look at, no arguing about who fucked who. You know who would have made this though. movie? It would have been Sandler. This could be a Sandler movie. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Heartbeat. That's absolutely true. This would be a Sandler movie, but they would remove all of the fucking midlife crisis shit. Yes. Like what is what I feel made this um, <clears throat> super appealing 
is that it's fucking it's a boomer fantasy camp shit. Yes. Yeah. That's I think a big part of it too. Well, yeah. The, the funniest thing about it is that it starts like the whole idea at the beginning is that uh, Billy Crystal is like tired, thinks these things are getting him nowhere. And it ultimately, the message of the movie is ultimately like, yes, they do get you somewhere. You just have to find the right one. Yeah, but you just have to keep on blowing money on all this bullshit every <laughs> summer. <laughs> Thank and you. eventually not, you will fucking find happiness. Ironically enough, if you're not 39 like Billy Crystal is and like I'm going to be in a couple months. Uh, sure. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> this movie is about uh, a couple of three friends. That go around the world, go around the world on yep. exciting the world, <laughs> folks. exciting the daredevil way. adventures as yeah. a midlife crisis. Sometimes they bring their wives, mostly they don't. And every year, and now this time, Bruno Kirby's like, "Let's be cowboys together." And there's more to it than that. Just but that's kind of the, that's a log liner. Right. Right. Yes, but rubbing the money in our faces, right? Like I actually don't need the establishing vacation in Spain. No, yes. no. it eats we- a lot of time. I guess it's kind of funny because someone gets a a, a boo boo on their bottom. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cold open of this movie is we start in Pamplona. We're doing the running of the bulls, and here are our intrepid heroes. Uh, Billy Crystal is Mitch. Uh, the beloved Daniel Stern is Phil, and the late Bruno Kirby is Ed. They are doing the running of the bulls. Uh, fucking Dan Aykroyd doing some athletic or Dan Aykroyd. My God. Daniel Stern doing some athletic climbing and hanging yeah. from that uh, fucking flagpole. Yeah, he's looking fan- shabby. He's looking fantastic in this movie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He, he was a last minute. Uh, uh, he he replaced Rick Moranis at the last minute. And I honestly don't know if I believe Rick Moranis in this in no. this role. Well, also at all, kinda, you you also need him because like Bruno Kirby's really small, Billy yes. Crystal's not really tall. It's right. nice to have a big tall dude. This BDE that Daniel Stern is sporting in this movie, when he closes with Helen Slater at the end of the movie, it's not dude. totally inconceivable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, squirt, squirt. Dude, <laughs> he's fucking Super banging girl. Supergirl awesome. by the credits. Okay. Yeah. Good for him. This is the level of stern <laughs> mania we're talking this is, about it's, in this movie. It's male fantasy stuff, too, right? Because it's oh, like, yeah. oh, my terror of a wife. We see her on the airplane and later, and oh, my, what a battle axe, right? <laughs> I mean, dude, there's, I mean, yeah, that's a horrible person. And I like, would understand Daniel Stern being miserable married. And, to that and I person. could bang a twenty-year-old at work, and then I can go on this vacation, and then wind up with a with a you know very attractive lady. It's yeah, it's mm-hmm. wild. Daniel Stern closed where Jerry Seinfeld could not. Exactly. It's just absolutely, yeah. it's fantastic. It's it's a nice note. I don't know why yet. The family. It, it's funny that. Like it is a family vacation, you find it later. But the opening is just them uh, doing the running with the bulls, and of course you don't even get it until they're on the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And of course you're not going to have a, a Bart Simpson clone, Jake Gyllenhaal, running from these bull, bulls. <laughs> but Dude, like, you could have had Chris. You could have had actual Bart Simpson running from these bulls yes. because Yardley Smith is in the movie. Yeah, I would have loved that. Honestly, got- just do Roger Rabbit shit. We're a little all over the place. I do want to say when I saw Jeff, uh, when I saw Jake Gyllenhaal, kind of like 15 minutes into this movie, as a little kid, I didn't know he was in this movie. Full body shutter, full body. Oh, yeah. whoa. <laughs> it was just terrible. like, wow, whoa. yeah, got, got snuck right up on you, huh? It did. It was. It, it grossed me right out, dude. It grossed. It's me disgusting. Right. It's <laughs> fucking insane. And also, like you know, the character of uh, Billy Crystal, uh, Mitch Robbins, being 39. I could have my own Jake Gyllenhaal by now. <laughs> Yikes! I, it's by crazy. The, it's, dude, you, you it's, could it's have you could my have, mind. You could have Jake and Maggie, man. Yeah. <laughs> by, by the way, you want a bar bet that you could probably win. You could probably sucker somebody with. Oh yeah. Bet them that Jake Gyllenhaal was the the disgusting kid at the beginning of Jurassic Park. <laughs> mm, oh yes. yep. You could get people to fall. You for could that. get for people to fall for that. I think much uh, better than Dustin Hoffman in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Becky Gelke. Oh, right. One of the things I want to point out about this, uh, the running of the bull scene, is because it happens a lot throughout this movie. The bizarre uh, musical choices. Yeah. Like, so here we have the running of the bulls, and off we go, and the cue is Fat Guy John Candy music. Fat Guy John Candy music. Billy Crystal, for some reason, in a full Mets baseball uniform. <laughs> well, yeah. You, you have to it's the, the music is to tell you that there this is fun 
that they're having fun because right. they're screaming about we're going to die, we're going to die. I'm going to have a fucking well, horn up my ass till the day I die. Well, that's what uh, happens with the, with the rest of the movie too. Like with the movie, like because it gets dark in places. Like when it gets dark, it's like, but we're still going bah, 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 <laughs> to let you know that we're having yeah. fun. Like when like Yard, I mean that Yardley Smith scene, which we'll get to, is like fucking crushing and it's like oh, oh yeah. god wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> you all ruin your life <laughs> toilet what flush a, what a fool believe <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say i was watching this movie last night and i mean the late great bruno kirby oh, oh yeah yeah he crushes it man he does great. i will tell you i mean like a couple of other things would need to have changed as well in that mario brothers movie you get Bruno Kirby in the early nineties yep. as Mario. Oh, yeah, that's he, it. He's got he's, what, he's not, yep. like Bob Hoskins is too gruff. Bruno Kirby is adorable and likable. Perfect. You know, Perfect. Uh, yeah, you can see you, him going yeah, wahoo, and you're like yeah, let's do it, Bruno. <laughs> he would have been get, great. You get a wiry chud era, a, a weight level Daniel Stern as Luigi. <laughs> yes, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. that's about the si- the right size mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the right head. You need a person with a very an, a, an oddly long head, and Daniel Stern has <laughs> the long head, huh? Yes. Well, just also, a little I mean, longer than it should be. It's pretty great because at the beginning of this movie, he's more or less dressed like Mario he, anyway. Absolutely, that, he looks like when My- Mario gets the fucking fire flower. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> and man, he looks great in this movie. He looks like Mario. He could definitely pull it off. Did you guys? Happen to see what his last television credit is? I mean, oh, no. acting credit is. It's very depressing. I know it's sad. He died pretty young at age fifty-seven in two thousand six, and his last role was on Entourage. Oh, oh. No. Uh, it's sad. Playing himself or playing a character named uh, Phil Rubenstein. I don't uh, know what that's probably about. Probably some big ch- cigar chop and producer. Blah blah yeah. blah. He's going right. to do the movie with Vince. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he may or may not do the movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me uh, <laughs> look at the uh, plot synopsis here. <laughs> With Aquaman packing multiplexes across the world, it's time for Vince to capitalize on his success and pick his next project. Ari informs Vince that the dream role of Pablo Escobar in Medellin is available. I'm going to stop reading because there's a wait. Oh, wait, no, he, he's mentioned here. <laughs> yeah. And all he needs to do is impress Phil Rubenstein, the film's oh, producer. Okay, there so we he is the producer. I remember of this Medellin. episode. That was his yes. last fucking performance. Oh, man. Yeah, well, dude. I, he, that. That episode, it aired in July 2nd, and Bruno Kirby was dead, like, pretty soon after. Yeah, that's a Jeez, that media. sucks. Uh, yeah, it. August 2006. So, I wonder if they had planned a longer arc with him, and that's why uh, the thing, like, Medean had to go, and then that Landau Ramones movie became the thing. Oh, right, <laughs> right. but then they don't let him do that anyway, and then yeah. Martin Landau's, like, I'll never let you make the Ramones movie ever. <laughs> ah, and then ah, I, ah. I was just like, I think he gets but to that's... make Meta E eventually, though. <laughs> he does. But the eventually fucking Ramones does. thing would have been so cool. And I was like, that was actually the moment I stopped watching Entourage, funny enough, because I was like, yeah. that would have been such a cool thing to see. Well, I don't care about this. And I stopped. Good for you. What an embarrassing TV show. What were we smoking? <laughs> it's a, it, it we were smoking insane. 2004, dude. That's that's all it was. <laughs> Straight up. Just, that's all you had. It was yeah. it was the style at the time. So yeah, we're we're, we're running from the bulls. Billy he, Crystal gets fucking knocked up the ass by one of them. <laughs> I got uh, pegged. Uh. <laughs> oh, peg. Whoa. We do see Kirby jump uh, over a barrier and land on some people's head, kind of Mario esque. <laughs> <you ask me. laughs> That's true. Well, His the head pegging goes through that brick. The pegging leads to the uh, a- animated credits. Oh boy, for all, this all timer, an all timer in the in the cartoon. Absolutely, opening. yeah, because they it, it, it like gives you nothing. <laughs> it's just like here's oh it, it's gonna be cowboys you ready for yeah. cowboys so there's a cowboy guy he's got some like big boots or chaps on and he's doing the lasso and when he lassos it like changes the names of the people involved in the film right yeah. i think that, like, we're also we're doing stuff like oh we show that they are like he's like skydiving for a second he's scuba diving so it's like oh we're kind of catching you up a little bit on what these characters have been doing and it's also just a nice like you're just letting this little cartoon play out like eventually he's got like uh the the cowboys interacting with the cow and they're like dancing and stuff and it's just this nice stupid 
what you want out of a fucking cartoon opening. I prefer Madhouse. That's just me. <laughs> personal oh, opinion yes. on Madhouse. That. Classic uh, episode. Classic film uh, that absolutely. no one has ever seen. I was starring <laughs> Christy Alley and John Larroquette. I would also say uh, Honey, I Shook the Kid, another episode we've done. But yeah, I, I like that. That's a big one. That's like Weekend at Bernie's 2, classic Very cartoon opening. Because this one. one's a little cheap because it's a black background and it's just you're just animating the little guy there. Maybe uh, sometimes the cow. Uh, and the whole fucking point of the movie is friendship, and it's just, like, what yeah. I assume is supposed to be the Billy Crystal character, I guess, like, doing all this no, shit. No, uh, that's, I, I've i never, you know, why? who says a cartoon opening has to be direct, like, you know, acknowledgement of what goes on in the movie? I mean, he's doing the scuba thing and all those things. That's supposed sure, to represent what, he, what Billy Crystal and them were doing. Yeah, I, but I, I'm not, I don't think that that's supposed to be Mitch, the fucking main character i, I don't know it's a it, little cartoon fella but still i would like it to be three cowboys is it so hard <laughs> to get three cow- <laughs> is that so much more money to get three cowboys well, fucking hanging out the problem is they drew uh the bruno kirby one like, oh that looks too much like mario we got to get rid of it we're gonna get sure. in trouble <laughs> yeah nintendo's yeah. gonna have a fucking field day Woo! Ha! <laughs> so- you know it's been forever since i saw three amigos i wonder if that has three cowboys as a cartoon mm. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm guessing no cartoon intro for that, but I I can't really quite remember. I don't remember Three Amigos having a cartoon intro. Yeah. No. So Billy, we cut to Billy Crystal uh, getting uh, treated in a Spanish hospital, uh, and it's it's like he has a funny joke of like, oh, you know, hey man, uh, he's worried about you know the, the service or whatever. It's like whatever is was supposed to be open, don't sew it up. But like, oh so yeah, where's What's going social, on with his ass social, here is my question. The, <laughs> I think it's the, the socialized medicine is scary. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, the idea, I mean, it's just, he's got, he's written in so many quips here for himself where, or they did, you know, the writers yeah. did, or I'm sure he ad-libbed a bunch, but yeah. So the, the joke is don't sew my asshole shut. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which it's, it's like, okay, doctor in Spain. Like, yeah, I'm sure this dude knows not to sew an asshole clothes. But, but do you think if they it, sewed no, it clothes, doesn't. Chris, that, that he would shit out the wound if they left that open? <laughs> come on. Like it would hemorrhage on. out. One day it would just come out, flop out, right? It was just taking a shit. <laughs> or or he goes to the wrong hospital. Uh oh, you got a Billy Crystal human centipede. That also could oh, happen to you. My God, and please don't worry. The rear <laughs> either either the rear or the middle dude you got to have that dude's mouth sewn up <laughs> Keep oh, I, don't, kirby. I want Bruno kirby to be the one who's talking he's I want hard him- enough to listen to <laughs> when he's not sewn to other people can you imagine how obnoxious it would be right. he'd never stop complaining about it so now here we go uh comic relief human centipede who do you want where now you got your choices obviously are robin williams Whoopi goldberg and billy crystal so where okay. who's who's in what position folks you want the whoopster at the front. Yes, mm, I agree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, dealer's choice on the other two, really. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you could go either way. I mean, both of them are getting, like, I guess one has to do two things. Uh, no, you know what? Honestly, yeah, dealer's choice. I say no, dealer's choice. Can I say, I think it's got to be Robin Williams in the middle. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and, and can I tell you why? Because, sure. like. I feel like he would be the most like hoo, ha, hoo, ha, yeah. like gesticulating, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I feel like Time if that down. guy's in the in the middle, you know what I mean? He's gonna like throw him off least. Okay, right, you know, at least, yeah. like that way, like Billy Crystal can be in the back, making sure everything's sturdy. <laughs> the whoopsters in the front, holding it down, navigating and whatnot. And then if he starts like Robin Williamsing all sure, over the sure. place, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. he's 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 penned in you know got it but but the problem i mean the the the, the, of course the problem with having ron williams in any situation other than the first uh first position (laughs) um out of human centipede is that he's going to be talking anyway and those stitches are going to rip oh man as quick as they go it's just going to be right off please stop burn off (laughs) please stop doing groucho marks you're burning my asshole alive (laughs) you are fucking killing me with this literally killing me with this groucho marks oppression (laughs) how i ate your shit i'll never know Whoopi Goldberg speaks a little slower, maybe mm, like, yeah, mm. maybe it's, maybe it's, but, but I do, I, I want to hear from her. I don't want to hear from the other two. Yep. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted yeah, out. Yeah, it's important. Yes. Yeah, it's incredibly <laughs> important. So like, he's got to have everything like, you know, wrapped up. There's going to be a bandage and, you know, uh, Daniel Stern's like, oh, well, or one of them says, maybe she, you know, your wife won't notice, i.e. I- 
you won't have to tell her, you know, you got hurt doing the dangerous thing. And it cuts to Billy Crystal, like, basically with, like, a diaper bump through his yeah. khakis. It's kind of funny. And his wife's, like, staring at it. <sighs> yeah, and she's just annoyed. I mean, I guess, you know, she got a trip to Spain out of it. I don't know what else they were doing. I, I hope that they front-loaded the trip with cool stuff. And then they this was, like, the last of it, uh, you would hope. <laughs> I feel like that's how you do something like that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, look, honey, like we want to take a nice vacation to do something stupid, but if we front load it with we have a nice time, then yes. I just do the stupid thing at the end before we go home. That should work out nicely. It's yeah. a great I, I, tapas dinner is kind of a situation. <laughs> oh, for sure. I I have to say I really do appreciate the, the big bump on his ass. Oh, yeah. Because it tells me that the Spanish doctor understood him and is like oh this motherfucker i'm just i i don't speak english therefore i'm bad at my job <laughs> and so i'm gonna make him look e- either like he's a comp- he's either a baby or <laughs> he looks like homer when he got stung on the butt <laughs> it's one or the other is what he's gonna you, get looking like for yeah. fucking days if you saw that guy on the airplane you'd think he's like in a diaper shitting himself like yes. i don't want to sit next to that <laughs> give, give me away from that please if you could yeah, put that back by the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we meet uh, Bruno Kirby's like very young, sexy girlfriend who's like, it's kind of it's it's hilarious because the I've been ruined by movies so much that I didn't even see the age gap. Honestly, you know what I mean? Like, that's just how shit right. works in movies like. No, 40-year-old guys date 20-year-old girls. That's why that's how that works. And then this movie actually <laughs> actually calls it. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. At least I will say this. It's presented negatively. Yes, it is. Here. You know, Billy Crystal has, it's kind of a funny line. He's like, you keep getting older, your girlfriends keep getting younger. Soon enough, you're going to be dating sperm. That's a good joke. That's <laughs> that a good, good joke. The, the, there are good jokes in this movie, for sure. And that's a great one. Probably my favorite. And I mean, there's also the great, like, you know, so then they're setting up, like, Daniel Stern does not get along with his wife. And, you know. They're sit- Bruno Kirby and Billy Crystal are like across the aisle and Stern's like a couple back. So they're doing like a look at Philly's pretending to sleep so he doesn't have to talk to his <laughs> wife. Like the plane hasn't even taken off yet. There's no way he's asleep. That I rules. mean, I, I understand that more than like I would be if I was Bruno Kirby, I would be checking Billy Crystal a little bit with the jokes he's making. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, be like, with, hey, man. with her in earshot, like <laughs> it, it both with this uh, with this girlfriend and. This he the wife is a different character, correct? No, it's it's the same. I think it's the same girl. It is they the just same, wind up getting married. It's the same girl. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, I I did I did notice. Um, but in both cases, he says some really fucking wild shit to he them. He does. He does within earshot, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, we're we're buddies, buddy. But could you maybe just take it down? You know, I'm not talking about your wife like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Dude, you not, the more uh, I think about this movie, it's like. Daniel Stern is feels like it, that should have been the lead character. He actually he goes through stuff. Mitch, he's like, even when he comes back from this lavish vacation in Spain, and he's just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm kind of depressed. I need another vacation. And yeah, he, like what 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 are the stakes for him? And he he finally learns to oh, I I love my family, and that's the key to everything. And it's like he he seemed to know that before. No. Yeah, he doesn't seem yeah. to be like a distant father or a bad husband. So the fact that that's the realization, it's like, yeah, dude, you you were doing a pretty okay job at that, you know, the first go around. Like you're just in a little bit of a rut. Quick objection on a, a, a not a bad husband. His wife is fucking sick of it by the end of this one. Dude. Oh yeah, she's like, because it, it, we cut to a year later, uh, and you know, it's uh, it's Billy Crystal. It's his birthday. He's turning thirty nine. We have this cute bit about. The phone, the answering machine thing with his parents calling, which I remember like yesterday. Like that's one of those, so do I. That yep. is one of those yep. scenes that is just like burned into my brain. And I'll tell you what, dude, I was thinking about it just a few weeks back because I think about it on my birthday every <laughs> year because my mother does this exact thing. Whoa, oh, really? this is this is the truest uh, wow. joke to ever translate to me. More now, I didn't realize it as a kid, but she does it now. Like it just happened. And I don't mind it, but this is just what always happens. It's uh, the you get the phone call, it's eleven oh one a.m. Blah blah blah. She starts. Go, she tells the the same exact thing. Uh, does does it's she incredible. accidentally call you Mitch at the end? <laughs> <laughs> did she, she lift just, it from? Did this she movie? start doing it in nineteen ninety two? Oh wait, you guys were you guys thought I was talking about my mom talking about my own birth? No, she calls and does the city slickers thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would actually be delightfully even more deranged, and I would love it. She's just a big Billy Crystal fan. 
Oh, Billy Crystal was big in our house. Oh, those Oscar years? That was mm-hmm. Maximum Jupin's all hands on deck tuning into the Academy Awards. Oh, man, you are stronger than I am because my note uh, uh, on this was like, cut her off. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> getting this I, I i'm like i i if it's 11 if it's that early in the morning and she's calling me telling me about my birth no thank you so chris cavett you're saying here you just like go around telling your mother to shut the fuck up whenever <laughs> she goes on too long no, well if it's about my birth yes i would um <laughs> my mom calls me every yeah she's like you know you were born oh my god it was 11 44 and then we noticed that you had little penguin hands you see and then we we <laughs> threw you off of the of the balcony me and your very rich father who was paul rubens we threw you off the balcony you see and then you were raised by circus penguins but yeah for me it's uh it's that my parents realized the scars on the wrong side that means the good eric is up in the fucking (laughs) cellar or the attic or whatever eric's got a belly full full of fish heads (laughs) Ooh. Uh, but and so look but now it's just Billy Crystal just bitching for about 20 minutes. Like everything yes. he's morose. Also, do they live on Roosevelt Island? What is he yes, doing on this fucking they tram? Do. They do. I really? mean, he, that would Here's depress me, man. That would depress this, me right, right quick. I'll tell you this. So this exemplifies how long ago it had been since I'd seen this movie. I the last time I saw it, I wasn't even aware of the existence of Roosevelt Island, let alone how fucking miserable it would be to leave live there. Of course you hate your life. You <laughs> yeah. have to sit on that fucking people mover to well, go to work every actually, day. There's a there's an F train stop there. Yeah. Um, on oh, the yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But like I'm the only person, you know. I think, in this uh, room here that is like I, I kind of like Roosevelt Island in a way. It's not it's small. There's nothing much there. What? It looks brutalist Eric. soviet-esque eric but maybe that's where i'd be at home <laughs> eric that's, yes. of, of course you like roosevelt island it's forgotten by god <laughs> love things like that it is just it for, has been man it's just for I, everybody's it's like a little island off the coast of midtown basically well, here's in the thing. Yeah, it's, in, it's in between manhattan and queens yes. in the east river and yes. it's becoming a college campus right now so mm, very people, soon. soon enough people are gonna have a completely different idea on roosevelt island they'll say eric was right <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I, I did always assume this was Chicago simply because the opening music is specifically Chicago fat guy music. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, yeah. The, 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 those, the, the, the keys there, the, yep. it's very different from New York fat guy music. Mm-hmm. It's, it, 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 it's, not, it, it's not as jingly. Chicago in New York. was leeching out in the 80s and early yes. 90s. It had it's, such it's a true. presence in American pop culture and film that the sausage river was just oozing out towards new york comedy was run by the chicago mafia essentially <laughs> and pretty much bring them back bad best times better times here's a sad thing this man billy crystal mitch robbins he's about to turn 39 years old and this morning of his birthday when he's like going back and forth with his with his wife here uh this dude really really hammering home that he has to have a birthday party. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's all put that shit in check, man. Fucking birthday parties. Folks, you gotta relax. He's it's- having birthday parties. He's going on lavish vacations with his friends every year. He's got a position of power in his office, and he is oh I'm sad. This year Why? he's having multiple birthday parties. Mm-hmm. Not only is he gonna have the one with all of his friends that's gonna turn into a Woody Allen movie, <laughs> it's gonna he also has a family one because Oh no, his daughter doesn't want to listen to Boeing people all night. Jesus. Oh, no. oh right. Like, well, yeah, you know what? Who cares? That's, that's fucking great because the way they write that in, the daughter is not in the birthday party scene, which means you don't have to see Billy Crystal's real life daughter <laughs> acting as his daughter. Yeah. You, for but, that meltdown. But back to the birthday party thing. And I mean, I haven't had a birthday party yet. I think so. It's like in my 20s, and those are usually just bar things. This is uh, Daniel Stern at some point, like his wife wants to leave. And he's like, but we haven't had cake. And he hasn't even opened his presents yet. I'm like, what? you're getting presents. <laughs> and it, like, cake is fine. It's a birthday party, sure, I guess. But like, I'm not opening my presents like I'm seven years old. Yes, he's doing that. And he still doesn't have enough. Life's enough. not good enough for me. This and also, shit. it's his <laughs> 39th birthday. It's, it's not insane. even the big four. It's, look, it's, look, you want to have a party for the big four? Oh, I'll get you a fucking watch or something. Like, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll, remember that. I'll remember that for next up. year. I got a watch, <laughs> you get com- watch coming for me. Oh, but you don't know which one of you I said I'd buy. <laughs>
39 is a, a steak dinner at a nice restaurant with your wife exactly. and I guess your family if you are so inclined. If you've got, if you've got some buddies that are close, like, hey, man, you want to you go out for a drink? And then look, oh, yeah, it's your birthday. I'll buy you a drink. Like, that's yeah, kind of sure. how that works. That's ex- yeah. that's all there needs to be. Uh, but he goes to work. Jeffrey Tambor's fucking chewing him out because I also remember the Pizza Guy song very much. The uh, Yeah, totally. It's a, I mean, and, and, you know, he's got it. Especially for the time in 1991, he's 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 a ad sales for a Black Lives Matter radio station. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, WBLM. <laughs> it is WBLM. Oh, is it? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Oh, yes. all right. I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> it's literally. Well, I had WB- no idea. It's WBLM. Yeah. That got a chuckle out of that. I will. I will literally not be able to stop thinking about Paul Giamatti now. Going like WBLM. <laughs> <laughs> But ad sales um, I mean, in the '90s yeah. for a radio station, you're putting out a pretty penny, that's for sure. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're running it. Yeah, I just oh, yeah. googled WBLM, a real radio station in Portland, Maine. Ooh. So quite St- far from uh, the throes of, you know, between Queens and Manhattan. Still, uh, I am really. I mean, I know we talk about this all the time, but like Billy Crystal is running ads for a a radio station, what seems to be a pretty popular one. Uh, he doesn't seem to be the only person working on it. Uh, and then uh, D- Daniel Stern is the manager of a, a supermarket. Yep. Bruno Kirby, uh, what sporting goods store manager? Sporting goods, uh, a manager of a sporting goods. I, I think he owns you, them. At he, least, he's, yeah, yes. with his brothers or something. Right? His yes. cousin yes. runs yes. the store. His like, cousin, yeah. yes. So these people are doing a, a, a yearly international <laughs> yep. vacation. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing what looks like pretty lavish birthday parties for each one of them when they get older enough. <laughs> they get papas in their mouth and beers, I guess. Yeah, this is why we call them baby boomers. And they have these apartments that oh, look oh. like uh, like the fucking Mandel brothers from fucking Dead Ringers have this apartment. <laughs> the stick no. is humongous. Well, it's hold beautiful. tight. You got to hold tight, Chris Gavin. Again, remember. They live on Roosevelt Island. Dude. I'll take it. Yes, and they're I not being guess. choked to death by student loans. That's the big thing. <laughs> oh, but, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was able to just. He went to college. He's you know he probably bust tables or whatever, and he was able to pay for five thousand dollars a year to go exactly. To school. And now he has a, an amazing job at a at a radio station. He's doing just fine. No, nothing short of the king of Roosevelt Island would be able to live in an apartment <laughs> like this. Like I, I just don't. It get is it. gorgeous, and th- I mean, one, another another perk for Roosevelt Island: the view is going to be great if you got a unit facing Manhattan. Mm. It's true. <laughs> that is. True. That's. I mean, yeah, that's true. O- outside this this birthday party, I was like, "Ooh, this is a nice view." <laughs> so the party is going along. Daniel Stern is pretending to sleep on the couch at the party. Very embarrassing. Um, and you know, the wife comes over, gives him the business about leaving. And he's like, look, we just got here. Yes. Like Steve said, cake, yada, yada. Um, just 15 more minutes. So then, you know, the three guys sit down and they, Bruno Kirby and Daniel Stern present Billy Crystal with his birthday present, which is, you guessed it, a totally free vacation, two weeks. They're just paying for, I mean, cause right. It's a gift. Yes. Like, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 If any of you got me a vacation for my birthday, I'd feel really, really uncomfortable. I'd be really <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh, yeah, man, that's awesome. All right, okay. Let me too. cross this off here. <laughs> no. Okay. I, well, <laughs> Eric, I mean, I guess Steve didn't want it, dude. All right. <laughs> I guess we did all gonna, that research. I guess you and I will have to die by the bulls then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica con trip over. Oh, shit. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, no. But it, it's one thing to be like, "Hey, man, for your birthday, how about we go someplace?" It's another thing to give. Like, that's like, I give. But you know, that's something like you want to surprise your wife with, or something like that. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. Just well, yeah. I was gonna well, surprise you, yeah. Steve, because they got Michael Hogan laying in state like he's Lennon at this <laughs> Battlestar Con. He's still alive, I believe. <laughs> what is he? No, but he gets in a glass coffin at these con- uh, conventions, <laughs> yeah. and then Hold people on. can come up and pay for the crowd, respects. just to get the crowd going. Uh, just <laughs> checking it out. Uh, Mr. Michael Hogan is here. It comes. He's still alive. <laughs> he's oh. not alive. He's not alive. He's barely he was, alive. He he's, was. Just, I believe he's actually uh, got severe medical problems right yes, now. Yes, he did. Yeah, there, there was a uh, GoFundMe that I definitely gave money to. Uh, he was in Sonic the Hedgehog, at least. As, hey! As Air Ooh. Force Chief, Chief of Staff. 
So there you go. I forgot. Very nice. How, about How could I ever forget? <laughs> so the birthday present, such as it is, is two weeks on a real life active cattle drive. Because remember, Billy Crystal, you really liked the movie Shane when we were kids and so on. Don't you want to work for your vacation? Isn't <laughs> yeah, that dude. Like what I- in the fuck? Well, this is for people that never worked before, Chris. This is for people that have never actually done a, a, any manual I- labor. Okay, that's true. But like, also, like you do, all, like you two have jobs. Billy Crystal also has a job. It doesn't seem like a real job because Jeffrey Tambor is his boss, <laughs> but it is a job. And what is he supposed to do? Just be like, oh yeah, surprise! My fucking buddies are taking me to fucking handle cows for two well, weeks. This is exciting too because he he hems and haws. There's that scene where Jake Gyllenhaal introduces him at the uh, high, not the high school, the el- is it elementary school, I guess. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's oh, God. Um, I'm trying to remember what kids are. And- Nightmare <laughs> scenario, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and he he hates his job because he feels like it's not tangible. Like, oh, my father, or grandfather, or whatever, made upholstery, and he could hold yeah. the product of his work in his hand. And I I sell air. I just I, sell air time. I and just not. Oh, I feel like what he's getting at, which you can't uh, uh, really come to terms with this. He's creeped out by his own son because he's got a little sure. nightcrawler running around his house all the time, man. <laughs> He's, got a little... he's, he's so upset about his job and it's just like i say come and dick i'm 39 <laughs> you're doing okay I, I could use a dude ranch outing sure. I, I'll, I'll say this jake gyllenhaal was strapped to a chair a uh, clockwork orange style with the fucking things to lift his eyelids up and was fed Bart Simpson clips, like <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. just nonstop for this role. Like he he looks exactly like Bart Simpson. I mean, he's he got looks- much lighter hair that's just spiked up because it's 1990. At, at this party, even the fucking when uh, uh, Bruno Kirby again, this this Bruno Kirby's wife cannot fucking get a break. Mm-hmm. This kid goes over and is like, uh, the mom, uh, uh, Patricia uh, uh, Wedding, her name Wedding, uh, is like. Oh, it's nice. You know, it's nice to see you again. Everything, you know, I, we saw your ad, your underwear uh-huh. ad and everything. And you, you, you look so nice. <laughs> and then Jake Gyllenhaal is just like, Mom, you said wait till she has two kids. Yeah. Like, wait till it's, it's what underwear yeah, she see, has on then or something. See like how that. good like, she looks after ha- she has two kids. Yeah, totally. That's literally something like Bart would do to March. Like. At, at like a function mm-hmm. but yeah this poor woman has to get humiliated in front of this fucking little shitty kid you know that's not fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's not, not. uh so yeah they're like so they convince him to like you know agree to the, oh the yeah. weird thing to the other fucking weird thing about this is daniel stern is like and the best part is buddy it comes yep. right when your vacation happens and i'm like uh, so what uh, happened here <laughs> like is it like daniel stern dials into jeffrey tambor and is like <laughs> When is Mitch's, I guess, pre-scheduled vacation time? <laughs> I guess well, so. I mean, yeah, was I would have been like, is that why I got yelled at? Was this like, was that a joke to get me like, fr- like ready to go? Or like, I, right. I would be really confused by all of this. Like, why did Jeffrey Tambor do this right when I'm about to go on this, again, cow handling trip? And he says what most 39 year old men and or human beings would say, which is like, oh, I can't. Because I already have plans with my fucking family. Like, we're going to see my wife's family. Like, that's just yes. what you do when you're late. Well, you know what I mean? Like, but then the wife realizes that she married the biggest stick in the mud. And she's mm-hmm. like, I don't <laughs> want you there. In fact, I don't know if I want you at all. Exactly. Oh, this is a real. Yeah. Well, we're, this is a light. Div- not, it's yeah, a, well, it's a like, trialish separation. It's find it's, yes, your it's spark close. again because this is not the guy I married kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's a trial separation so much. It's like a, okay, you have two weeks. Fucking get it together, mm-hmm. dude. Yes, this is like I'm giving you two weeks. Figure it the fuck out. Yeah, it's not trial separation. It's like being pr- on probation in your marriage. You know what I mean? It's just like, listen, <laughs> your, things aren't really working out here. Your quarterly reports but, are shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> look, uh, look, if you're going to have an affair, do it now. <laughs> this is exactly the time to do uh, it. You could argue your way out of it pretty much, maybe. I always so, say when my wife makes me fill out my goals for the following year. Yeah, it's tough, dude. Like, how are you gonna, uh, three? I'm not going to get three. <laughs> <laughs> I but I do love Yardley Smith comes in and I guess she's just trying to ruin this dude's life, I guess, is the move. You know, you're coming Yeah, this is kind of a nuclear reaction, isn't it? 
like she's just late and i mean like obviously like you know this guy is pretty scummy you know cheating on his wife with a, with a 20 year old girl who's his employee as well and, but she comes she's there with a nuke in hand like hey i'm in front of not even like hey mister so because he, he even tries to do the thing of like oh you must have had a problem with the register whomever let me talk to you about right. that and then yeah. she's like no i'm late in what, front of it's, everybody what, wow it's amazing too it's like at Billy Crystal's house at his birthday party. She went to their home, and what was it like? Their servants or something told them where they were. <laughs> yeah, I, I forget no what idea. the line was. It was, it was something like that. Man, these people have it all, and they're so <laughs> sad. It's crazy. I remember as a kid, this scene actually made me uncomfortable because um, I didn't. Because it's like, Lisa Simpson talking about being knocked up. Uh, she, you know, listen with voice actors, man, like. She just sounds like Lisa Simpson, yes. and it's just Lisa Simpson going, "I'm late. I missed my period." It's yeah, like, ah, that's what it is. No. Yeah. Uh, don't yep. click on that when you see it on a torrent. <laughs> no, absolutely. It was in the back seat of his car. Oh, I remember there was. I think it's her. Um, in that um, that uh, what do you call it there? That uh, inside the actor's studio, something something revealing that like dudes have like asked her for phone sex in the Lisa Simpson voice and no. she always gets creeped out like no absolutely not Jesus so which character does so- she do, do then um, <laughs> let's see what, what are the other ones she voices she, I don't um, think she does any, any other nothing ones. She, she just does do, Lisa but she does Bart doesn't she no, no Bart, that's that's uh, fucking what's her face Nancy Cartwright yeah uh, who's huh. a, kind of a lunatic uh but is she yes. dead now she, or something I, I just saw her a credit that in 2022 one episode she did do bart at oh that's point, f- which is oh which i don't know uh, nancy cartwright uh crazy scientologist mm. Mm. Ooh. i don't know i was thinking trying to think something else from that inside the action studio which is a fucking totally uncomfortable episode because they're all just sitting there doing the voices and yes. it's like i much preferred when mark hamill explained to kevin smith like that he would never do the Joker in public like that and ruin the illusion or whatever, you know? Mm. Yeah. And they're, they're just out there fucking spitting Simpsons lines and <laughs> answering questions in the character voices. Like, come on. Ew. Uh, no but, fucking so- magic, dude. No fucking magic left with the <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> well, there, there hasn't been in a while, right? No, yeah. At least 20 years. <laughs> yeah, fair uh, point. The yeah, so like and like his wife, him and his wife start going at it, and you know this is Cassavetti's level shit, man. Daniel yes. Stern screaming at her. It's good. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, this is a good scene. It's it's a nice like adult scene to 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 anchor the film. And it would it right. plays so much different now that it's it's six foot seven Daniel Stern <laughs> versus Hartley Smith, who is like just very tiny and like. I, I could just imagine how much different it would be with Rick Moranis like being almost her size. Oh yeah, yeah that's like right. yelling at it. Yeah. right now he could lo- they could like f- he could like pick her up and fuck her, right? <laughs> yeah. Rick Moranis uh, yeah. and her you, would be you are like correct, Eric. too too <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anywho. Uh but it's it's fucking nuclear, man, because like Daniel Stern's wife is yelling at Yardley Smith. She goes, Get out of this house, you little whore. Which, first of all, you're kicking someone out of someone else's house. There are two words that didn't expect in uh, City Slickers. Whore and the one that comes later. I'll tell you, we'll talk. Oh, I thought the oh, other one was oh, yeah. little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. When when Jack Palance goes, rim job. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. Uh, the, the F-bomb later in the film. Oh, oh yeah, right. sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh but the, the, this ends with this fucking great Daniel Stern. If hate were people, I'd be China. And then the cut of Billy Crystal, let's bring out the cake. Yeah. Kind of some nice writing it, here. It was. I, I, Crystal saying the cake line. I I, I laughed. And escape Nazis. Calling your father-in-law escape Nazi. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's probably wherever he is on a Friday night with all the other escape Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's kind of great man because there's this and then there's another monologue that stern gets like a little later in the movie about baseball but like he's such a fucking great actor man and he really gets to shine it on in this movie he, he is fantastic and a bushwhacked is now available on hbo max if you're uh, yes. listening to this in <laughs> may 2022 uh worth a watch go there now <laughs> we will be doing that episode soon don't worry So Barbara, the next morning after the party, they kind of like start hashing things out here. And she's just like, this is where she's like, 
I'm not saying it's all right if you don't want to go with the rest of the family yeah. to visit her parents in Florida. She says, I'm saying I don't want you to come with us. Yeah, was a dude. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. Yep. That okay. is a birthday, real bitch. Let me just cursorily call a lawyer really quick just to sort of see, <laughs> see what my options are. My my old high school sweetheart has a bar down there. I'm gonna go talk to him for a little while, see oh, what happens, yeah. see well, what Kevin's up to. So you and uh uh and all your buddies can go fucking ranching for a week or two and leave me the <laughs> fuck out of it. Uh, so we we cut. We're on the ranch, man. We see some some dudes calf wrestling and tying up steeds and whatnot whatever cowboys do that sounds right <laughs> yeah <laughs> correct sure <laughs> um and you know so they they sort of introduce you to the cast of characters who are going to be like on this cattle drive or whatever including iron barry the ice cream magnates oh god that's yeah. so fucking great yeah uh, this is of course david pamer and uh josh, josh mostel mm-hmm. yeah and th- so this is like a ben and jerry's send up yeah, which is pretty funny. Did, yeah. did Josh Mostel's entire career just get flattened by Wayne Knight, or like mm, what happened there? He ate, I mean, like literally ate his lunch, man. <laughs> it's funny that you said Wayne Knight, though, Kevin, because I always confuse this guy with the guy on Seinfeld who plays uh, Franklin Delano Romanowski. Oh, mm. really? Yeah. Because huh. they're both kind of like... Big boys, yeah. Yeah, they're big boys. I, I get Big that. guy character actors who were around in the 90s quite a bit. Michael yeah. McShane is that actor who I believe was on the British Who's line for a long time, which I watched yes. incessantly. That is uh, correct. He's also the fucking inventor in Richie Rich. Am I remembering mm, Yes, that you right? are. Cr- oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just scanning through Josh Mestel's uh, uh, filmography, and the Basketball Diaries appears to be a nice little City Slickers reunion. Him and Bruno <laughs> Kirby. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, weird. Um and yeah, then you have uh Ben and Steve Jessup. They're a father and son dentist team. Ben is played by Bill Henderson, who's the cop at the end of Clue. Yeah, yes, right, and, yeah. Um, they do not other, know what to do with these black things. characters, even a little bit. Uh, well, they get rid nope. of them. They get rid of them in the, in the middle <laughs> of the movie. They're like, yeah, get, get, get out of here. That guy was in uh the younger guy, Phil Lewis, playing the son. He was in Heather's and mm. uh, a few other things. Hmm. And uh, you get your your great, uh, you know, Helen Slater, man. Yep. Oh, yeah. Supergirl. Oof. Supergirl, Becky Gelke herself. Mm-hmm. And she's like, uh, you know, this character who is like on this trip by herself. There seems to be Bonnie. Uh, there was a man in her life. who, Yes. The character's name is Bonnie. Who? Yeah. You know, there was a man who fucked her over. Yada, yada. He was There's supposed that. to go with her, and then now she's doing a kind of stag kind of a thing. She's, yeah, she's, on her, she's on her own eat, pray, love situation. Yes, <laughs> that seems correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good uh, uh, stern line here when he says, "You know, if you know, when I was alive, I would have found her attractive." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, speaking of me guessing wrong about uh, Last Boy Scout, here's Noble Willingham mm. as Clay Stone, the cattle ranch owner. Woo! It's great Run to see the him. <laughs> Job. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I was waiting for it. Uh, and he, he says he gets awesome. the titular line. He's like, "You come out here, city slickers. You're gonna leave your cowboys." Uh, oh yeah, yeah, dude. That's the fucking Claystone guarantee. Mm-hmm. And you got There's the great Tracy Walter, Bob, uh, as Cookie. Oh the right. Yes. Yep. Oh yeah. Always a welcome sight. This fella. Love that this dude's doing some back nudity in this movie. Mm-hmm. Get some. Gets Bob ass, <laughs> fucking weird Bob ass later in the film. Who, who is the uh, of the two bad cowboys? Which is the one that looks like the dollar store version of John Krasinski? Uh, that's the one who played in previous episode. Uh, played Swoop in Drop Zone. Ooh, oh, oh, oh yes. Kyle, Kyle Secor. Yes. 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 I was gonna say Sector, but that's wrong. <laughs> Jesus, they did a Mortal I, Kombat three again, man. Yeah, I kind of think of that a lot. <laughs> He's I, also in the motion picture Sleeping with the Enemy, isn't he? The fucking is he the shithead fucking uh, I don't husband think, or no? I don't think so. I don't that's think Patrick so. Bergen. Bergen. Yes. Yeah, that's oh Patrick yes, Bergen. that's right. That's I think right. he's probably like the hunk that she probably almost hooks up with. Oh, he Ooh. might get killed by Bergen actually. Yes. Kind of a that might be note to self: rewatch Sleeping I, with the Enemy. The funniest thing about so Ira and Barry are very sp- clearly supposed to be Ben and Jerry stand-ins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is this whole thing between them where they are like, uh, "I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. 
we're we're not as weird looking as we are on on our uh uh, uh ice cream thing, right? Like the cart now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I I'm just thinking like a, you're leaving laughs on the table, not showing me an actual one of these. Fucking, yes. Yep. Like, well, I, thing, I need to see this I, thing. I think because it's like such an overt Ben and Jerry's thing. And in 1991, I guess everyone knew what that looked like. And they're like, oh, those guys, those are just models we hired to pose as us. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, but if you're going to do it, if you're going to lean into it like that, then I want them to like meet while they're out on the uh, uh, on their adventure i want them to meet like two german tourists who are doing the same thing named hagen and dodd <laughs> oh dude them, <laughs> they or, were busy or, hanging out with all the other escaped nazis <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well i think with ben and jay like th- that joke could go two ways and you could still make it work like if they show the canister and like it's just two handsome as balls dudes like yeah. selling yeah. ice cream. That's one joke. But then if he's like, oh, we hired models, you know, that's not us. They're way more attractive hired models. And it's just two dudes that look like Josh Mostel and David Paymer. Like, you could also go that way. It'd be great if it was Wayne I mean? Knight and some other guy. That would be amazing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is that equivalent for him? Think. For Paymer? I don't know. I mean, now it would almost be uh, Michael Sh- uh, Michael Stuhlbarg. Stuhlbarg, yeah, but it's, yeah, he yeah, was like nine that. when this movie came out. Almost, you uh, could also do a Giamatti, maybe. Mm, yeah, he's in the I same. I can see that happening. Yeah, yeah, Michael Stuhlbarg with that fucking beard, by the way, oh. in uh, the staircase. Oh, <laughs> tremendous beard, tremendous. <laughs> uh, but so whatever, and like you know. We got our fashion show. We got to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, I mean, that's the thing, too, is like so much of this movie isn't plot. It's just sort of puttering and montage. It's killing time. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, big time. I mean, there's two separate montages in this movie where all their stuff gets destroyed on the train. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. You know? I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm sure they would act like, oh, this is we're getting to know the characters. Sure. And it's a, f- it's a fun trope of the era to do the. Uh, you know, the only thing that's missing is the I'm too sexy uh, song. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where is there like miss. the fucking cowboy cover of I'm too <laughs> sexy? Get a fucking banjo, like that, really ripping. Yeah, hell yeah. That'd be amazing. I'm <laughs> too sexy for my shirt. <laughs> get, get Waylon Jennings to do it. Get Waylon Jennings to do it and then cut out whatever this love ballad is at the end of this fucking movie that they have. This is the that's a woo, that's a bad song, it's is tough. it not? It's like it's the tough. same people whoever did the cover for the Aladdin song at the end of those credits. It's just Ooh, like boy. Taylor's <laughs> oh, and also in Beauty of the Beast, Taylor's oldest time. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. It is weird seeing real people sing songs made famous by cartoons. Yes, them. exactly. By oh, cartoon yeah. pots it's and hands. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, what, is, what I know, well, I, I know it more from a fucking tea kettle <laughs> fucking singing it to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, just uh, as, it's just as unsettling as seeing a Yardley Smith talk. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the same feeling mentally, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, then we go through the montage picking other clothes, and the big joke is, uh, Billy Crystal can't find the right cowboy hat and he puts on a Met hat and uh, you should point out of course he is a diehard Yankee fan there was like something something the Mets put a lot of money into some charity thing that he was doing so he like did it as a thank you yeah comic relief really it, it, yeah I read that oh, com- oh yeah. yeah of course yeah yes. comic relief that's yeah oh that's interesting right. yeah because I was saying it was it's kind of weird because when his mother was saying the, the story of his birth and they had to drive around the sawmill parkway I'm like that's Yankee town my well, friend no, no. It, it, it is the big, uh, his best day of his life is going to Yankee Stadium. It, it is kind of weird that he just wears, yep. he's always on Willie Mays and stuff, but for whatever. And it's obviously like the, they wrote the script with him obviously going to be a Yankee fan, and then he's like, but comic relief. And they're like, what? Okay, I guess he'll just wear a Mets hat for but no reason. But then you leave in that giant fucking Yankee Stadium thing, which yes. is something that happened to him in real life, apparently. Yes. Yeah, it's it's obnoxious. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just it's just confusing. Like it say is. thank you in another movie. Mm-hmm. Just say you went to Shea Stadium and whoa, oh, what a day it was. <laughs> it, it adds to the general like patchiness of this movie. Like where like diff- it feels like different parts of different scripts. Like I feel like they had the script for the Western part of this. That is most of the movie. And then they're like, eh, it's a little light here. Could we get Woody Allen to write us maybe 20 minutes? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe get us 15 pages of, uh, I'm going to get divorced, I'm depressed, 
I'm going to get a horn up my ass. <laughs> you know, the famous Woody Allen gags. Yeah, no problem. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, how old do you want the grocery girl to be? <laughs> of, of age this time, okay? <laughs> Let me just uh, talk to my writing partner, the Dark Lord. <laughs> what if uh, she, instead of a grocery girl, it was his adopted daughter? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a monster uh but so whatever the next scene is of course and this is stuff like stuff that i don't i mean like it, it actually comes to fruition so it, it needs to be in the movie but like it's a little heavy like this like oh the threat of rape for helen slater it's at all times a little, it's a little yeah. heavy and it's a little insane that we keep these guys around and that we go on the cattle drive with them yes. and then they become a problem later what wow what a, what a shock yeah, you got it. You got it. I mean, look, if you're any, if, if you're Billy Crystal, I mean, it shouldn't be necessarily up to Helen Slater. Be, go up to, to like, hey, those guys were bothering her, and I just think that those guys should not be going with us, and I might want my money back because these and guys how are about rapists. Curly yeah. can fucking settle it, right? Yeah, I mean, he sort of settles it here, but like, I'm sorry, but kick these guys out. Yep, or, real or, easy peasy, man. Or have you know what? Get. I know you know he's an old man, so maybe he doesn't like it. But make sure that, like, he's got to be, uh, Jack Pounds has to be ready to go on this drive. Mm -hmm. Have a doctor check him just yep. before he goes out. <laughs> he doesn't believe in doc. Well, no, he can't afford medical insurance. and. Uh, well, also, yeah. he definitely doesn't believe in doctors. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but, yeah, so, oh. like, they're, they're really bothering, like, really bothering this woman. And she's like, could you please leave me alone? They're not doing it. So then Billy Crystal and uh, Bruno Kirby kind of get involved and they start fucking with them, too. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, Jack Palance in his grand entrance, uh, you know, breaks everything up. Lassos a fella's neck, which is a great move <laughs> oh, that yeah. I would love to do one day. Yeah. It, my favorite thing that Jack Palance does is the open mouth, the loud open mouth breathe in. Ah. <laughs> that's, that's you know he's he's there. really one of his best moves ever like it just it, it, he he unleashes this thing maybe five or six times in this movie and every time i jump with joy <laughs> did you guys read about like the other people consider uh, oh yeah well eastwood yes. dude eastwood turned it down not enough money and charles bronson did you look yes. up the story about yes. this yes Oh my God, Phenomenal. Charles! Nobody does that to me. <laughs> yeah, he does not die, and he started cursing at Billy Crystal and said, "Fuck you!" <laughs> oh, great. I didn't hear that part. <laughs> Listen, you little fuck! Nobody kills Charles Brunson in a movie. <laughs> you little piece of shit. Yeah, I'll uh, do your Watchmen movie, but I'm only playing Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's also, the only character I'm playing. The irony here is that he's all the same year he's in the Indian Runner, where he absolutely dies in that movie. So what are we talking about here? <laughs> that's funny. He said so. Apparently, like Crystal said, well, that's the key part of the story. Curly has to die so the three guys can bring the herd in themselves, and uh, you and I would have some lovely scenes together. And apparently, Charles Bronson said, "Fuck you, I'm dead," and hung up. <laughs> Wow! This was on Yahoo Entertainment. I found the uh, the the scoop there. Hmm. Kind of incredible. And yeah. little did he know, he would have been able to come back to play Duke in the sequel. <laughs> and could have we could have had a Charles Bronson Oscar, by the way, uh, yeah. Academy Award winner Charles Bronson. Wait, That's he the world not, I want to look. Wait a second. Did he not get it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe. I he don't did. think he did. But I think he should have. Not for Death Wish three. Sadly, no. No, that was the best so. movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, wait, wait, the he was nominated thing. for one primetime Emmy. Okay, he the funniest thing is that he he turned this down in wake of like the canon run. His last movie before uh, uh, Indian Runner is that absolute maniac, uh, Kinjate. Oh, dude, that movie. Oh, oh yeah, yep, absolute <sighs> maniac. Forbidden movie. Secrets is that yes. the subtitle? That, of that movie, movie might be too spicy for this program. It's yeah, really it, something. It's almost too we much. We bring back, have to bring uh, back side order of sleeves yeah. on Patreon, maybe. For that uh, we one. Would oh, see, now look what you did. Now someone's gonna be like, they said they did it that one time. Now why aren't they doing it? <laughs> yeah. Eric said it. <laughs> well, it's gonna be uh, forty-five dollar a level. <laughs> yes, special le special level. And it's going to be full of bleeps because it's just like, all right, well, he does say this in this part. <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this movie unless talking about him saying this. Uh, 
The thing with Palance fucking throwing the the lasso around this dude, it looks like it's like almost like a metallic kind of thing that he's like whipping around his neck. It doesn't look like a rope rope. It's weird. It looks like it's harder or something. I'm sure it's some like stunt bullshit. Yeah. It's like an off color that rope normally is. I don't know. It's kind of weird looking. Like he's like strangling him with a fucking cord or something. (laughs) I'm going to strangle you with a phone call. Oh, that's right. There's no call waiting for you. <laughs> you know, I worked with Jack Nicholson not too long ago. <laughs> oh, hey, that's <laughs> funny, man. I know uh, Tracy Walter. We were at the rap party at Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen f- that man's ass. <laughs> a fun little reunion right there. It is. Yeah, pals. <laughs> I honestly, I mean, that's the thing. Is I would, I, after watching this, I still think I'm glad Jack Palance got an Oscar. I would give it to him for Batman. Don't forget your yeah. lucky deck. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar bumps. More screen time. <laughs> you are going to need it, my friend. I can just do the whole scene. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was worth it for him to do the push-up on stage. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, that was that was what sold that, it to me. But, thank you for mentioning this, Chris. I think that was the last like startling moment of the Oscars since the slap happened. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the two big moments. It's that's also, the two moments of the Oscars. Okay. Yeah. Well, wait a second. No, 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 no. What happened in between? They, uh, <laughs> when fucking Bonnie and Clyde fucked up Best yeah. Picture. Yeah. Moonlight. It's you. Right, right. And and uh, Roberto Benigni, like, walking over people. Right. Oh, Their doing his beautiful. fucking clown shit walking <laughs> those over. Are, ch- whatever. Th- those are, like, the four or three. Yeah, those are the four <laughs> events of the Oscars. I got to say, what? man, just thinking about Crystal, because you you'd mentioned earlier that he was, like, your Oscar or whatever. I mean, he's everybody's, like, at least uh, people of our age. Yeah. Go back to one host who can en- who could entertain and just let them do their thing. You know what That's I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's got to be a song and dance person, man. It's just gotta, oh, well, yeah. now you just you just cursed us with James Corden hosting the Oscars. Oh right God, there. heaven no! But no. I think Crystal Anyone is him. is he's got a, he's got presence. He's fun to watch. Do I care for every single thing he does? No, but no. I would watch the Oscars hosted by him again. I would watch it hosted by Letterman again. And any anyone, a singular host it, would be terrific. It has to be somebody corny, even if it was Amy Schumer, who I don't even care for, or whomever else who I don't even care for. It just like. One host at least gives it a vision, and it's like, oh, now I'm watching the Oscars as opposed to like fucking fourteen people doing something. But it has right. to be somebody. Did the, the all those ideas were bad because it has to be somebody a little corny. Yeah, it has the Oscars are fucking corny. Yes. It's a corny fucking thing to do. So you have to have someone like Steve Martin or like Billy Crystal who can be a little corny. Right. Like, we'll see. Throw, and that's, like that. Throw John Mulaney in the mix. Just absolutely make sure, make sure Dave the guy. Chappelle stays home. <laughs> yes, please, please. <laughs> well, because it turned into this thing, and I think this is a, a, one of the many things uh, Ricky Gervais destroyed for everyone. It turned into this like truth to power thing to host an award show. Like, Fucking I'm going to take, shit. I'm going to take the piss Absolutely. out of it. I'm going to be really rude about yep. it, and like, and again, yep. like, yeah, of course, all these people deserve to be taken down a peg, but it's also like uncomfortable. It actually just makes things not move as slowly, as quickly as they want, and also it, the things we want to see. Vibe. We want to watch the awards. That's what you're trying to do. Everyone, yes. stop watching those. Stupid fucking celebrity roasts already, you know? Precisely. (laughs) I mean, that's the thing, right? That's why Crystal made it work so well, because, yeah, he's like a little cheesy. He's got just the right amount of song and dance. He's funny. And also, you never felt like when he was up there, he was disparaging the movies and disparaging the people in them. Like, he would make jokes about stuff, sure. But, like, now it's like... And you're right, it is, it's straight line from fucking Gervais, definitely. It's just this, like, isn't this all fucking stupid? And aren't these movies long and boring? Like, mm-hmm. fucking the, the Wanda Sykes joke about, like, I fucking watched Heart of the Dog, I fell asleep three times, or, like, what? And yeah. it's just, like, why are you, like, insulting the movies that these people liked enough to nominate? Like, what are you doing? You know, Steve, I think you had a, you had a, uh, a line about uh, the state of, like, blockbusters now of having this, like, ironic detachment. Yep. If you don't care, why do I? And I feel like that's the same with award shows. It absolutely is. Yep. Yeah. Like, just have somebody have some p- fucking pageantry in there and let's make it a three hour show. And like, yeah, let's it's a self suck, obviously. But that's the fucking point of it. And that's what we're watching. And that's. That's the thing is everyone thinks that they're blowing the lids off the joint yes. and blowing the wigs off and knocking the monocles out by calling them out uh, the self suck. But the thing is, 
Everybody knows it's a self-suck, including the people who are doing the self-sucking and the people at home who are watching the self-sucking on television. That's the fucking <laughs> that's the suck. fucking contract you sign yes. yeah. when yeah. you say you're going to watch the something fucking like an award show of any kind. Well, it's like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm trying to watch a Pornhub video of a guy sucking his own dick and then somebody starts right. making jokes about it. Like, no, get to the dude sucking his own cock. You got yeah. that totally. link? Or, you got that link handy? Or oh yeah, it's a, what is this? My search history. <laughs> Get that fucking dong in there to plug up all them bad jokes, dude. <laughs> they should have taken Ro- uh, Roberto Benini in for like bring him into some kind of compound and study his ankles because to <laughs> be able to do what he did that night sure. and climb over all those things, they must be like. Uh, th- 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 they made Weapon X and they made Roberto Benigni's <laughs> ankles. <laughs> that was, what the, that was Wait, what the two they things they made when they fucking made animated. To, like bringing in be, a co- bring in Roberto Benigni into a compound. That's the plot of the film. <laughs> I, was, I, I I almost actually pointed that out, but let it slide. <laughs> so the movie City Slickers. Uh, oh man, yeah. I mean, whatever. So Jack Palance, you know, breaks up the fight, and Billy Crystal feels a little bit emasculated by it, I guess. So like they're all eating dinner. And he does. It's a great old timey gag of you're gonna talk a bunch of shit. It's like always oh, right behind me, isn't he? Like that kind of which thing. I think was invented by Bugs Bunny. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's like that old of a joke. Which, by Fucking the way, Charles Chaplin or something. I, I love Jack Palance, but if he can get an Oscar for this, it's time Bugs Bunny got an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I crap bigger than you. Yeah. Ha. <sighs> Ah, oh yeah. yeah! Think about my ah hot shit. Ah. <laughs> so he takes like a big Jurassic Park like dump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Laura Dern, get over here! <laughs> Jack Palance is sick. <laughs> On his side. Well, Jack Palance can't be eating these berries. Why is he eating them? <laughs> That's a lot of shit, Jack Palance. Oh my God! Listen to him breathe. <gasps> ah. <laughs> What are these sores on Jack Palance's tongue? <laughs> Herpes. Oh. Jack Palance doesn't want to be fed. Jack Palance wants to hunt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn Absolutely. straight, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's luck of your great granddaughters. Oh, he also uh, does a great uh, a knife throw towards that dude's dick. Uh, oh, which is that. awesome. Yep. And then there's like talks around the camp, like the that uh, cookie that the the, uh, the chef there said that he had slit someone neck to nuts at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome. dude, that's you're on fucking vacation, man. You're at the like the little commissary getting some dinner, and the dude who's pouring fucking franks and beans onto your bowl goes, <laughs> uh, "See that guy over there? He's your guide for the weekend." One time, stuck a knife in a man, put it fucking. From his neck right down to his fucking nutsack. Enjoy your dinner. Well, oh it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> I bone tomahawked a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Jack Fallon's just ripping a man in two. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's like Noble Wilhelm's like, hey, here's two sex offenders and a probable murder. Hope you have a fun fucking <laughs> two weeks. Yeah, man, I think a couple of these folks are getting back from this excursion and they're suing him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, sure, like yes. this, you you are fucking out of business, Noble Willingham. Good job I, on you selling all these cows to the meat company because you are out of you business. You know why? It's the nineties. We're gonna sue you. <laughs> yeah. That guy could have shown up in this movie and would have nice. not missed a beat. He could have played Cookie or, or yeah. a cow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a horror film setup. Like yeah, yeah, honestly, no, totally. like if you have these two have. Uh, uh, the 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 bosses of the place like be like the motel hell father and mother mm-hmm. oh like, yeah it just it works so easily but because it's it, the 90s and it's billy crystal we're not going to be this doing is a that great exactly. idea should we write dark city slickers <laughs> yes please let's do it a <laughs> twenty uh, s- city slickers <laughs> oh fuck yeah dude fuck yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, where can oh, i want that oh you're gonna learn, worry about one thing and that's me. <laughs> Get, uh, yeah, I can, can we cast uh, w- one of the drowned cows can be Josh Gad. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever, man, our fucking little cattle drive starts off. Noble Willingham's like, we'll see you in Colorado. It's like, man, you should probably come. Exactly. Like, I'm going to be driving. driving. I'll be there. In, I'll be there in a couple couple days. And- totally. <laughs> well, like, what is he taking the fucking bus? I like, guess what? so. <laughs> But you know what? I think, honestly, after this excursion, he's got to be doing some undercover boss. I mean, 
Because these guys that he's sending these city slickers out into the wilderness with, it's unreliable. It's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Picturing dumpy old noble Willingham putting on like a like a lady's uh, you know wig or whatever and trying to see if anything fresh happens. I feel like everyone would spot him is the thing. Yes, I believe so. Well, he doesn't have his trademark mustache in this film, though. Oh, yeah, that's it is kind of weird. Also kind of weird, Billy Crystal's Michael Jackson impression when this uh, horse starts uh, walking uh, backwards. Sure, because again, there's just so much Billy Crystal is on a horse and we're going to get magic. Whatever he does, is going to be magic. We'll put it in the movie kind of. It's just riff. Exactly. Go riff, and, Go riff and, my man. And that's the, also kind of the problem. They let him riff a little too much. So I'm like, oh, this is the guy that's like despondent and deeply depressed at 39. Exactly. Doesn't seem it. I, and, and that's the thing too. To your point, Eric, I think that like uh, unfortunately, both Bruno Kirby and uh, Daniel Stern get the short thrift, and they don't get enough screen time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If this is yeah. a true like about city slickers, about the three of them, it's a be- kind of a better movie. You know what I mean? You got to balance that shit more. Yes. And it's like you know you need you need to see more of everybody's family life, exactly. like not just Daniel Stern at the party. Like, see Daniel Stern either at the grocery store yes. or at their house, and there's a big fucking blowout. Bruno Kirby, you know, at the bachelor pad with the lady friend, and there's a fucking Scatman Crothers poster on the wall kind of a situation. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. I would love that. Not a poster of Scatman no, Crothers, I don't even, like, a just naked big... woman poster. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. then you shave off all that Billy Crystal family shit. You can see the wife, the kid in, in passing. The kids don't need lines. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have no. fucking God, no. I don't need, like, fucking tiny Duddy Darko skittering across the fucking frame either. That, that could be fine. <laughs> Well, that's the fucking funniest thing is when it, at the end when like it, it, the one thing comes back and he's like, it's your kids. And I'm like, uh, of the many things that have been talked about over the last 90 minutes, your kids have not been one of them. <laughs> no, nope, like, the wife is mentioned. Almost everything. The, the kids are not mentioned even at all. Like, it's like, I, oh, I, little, I don't get it. It's like, oh, little Bobby, when I played catch with him, it was amazing. And then, oh, when, yeah. when my daughter lost her first tooth, I thought I was going to die. Like, any of that shit could happen, but none of that does. Totally. No. My no. daughter did a flute recital. It was really beautiful. My son, well, he kind of looks like a live-action anime character. <laughs> oh, he uh, talks shit about his daughter because it's like, uh, he's like, you know, because she's like, why don't you quit your job if you fucking hate it so much? Because like, we're having this conversation now. And he's mm-hmm. like, but I can't because she's going to go into art school. And she's like, well, she's very talented. She's like, she she fell off the stage and I'm like Jesus Christ dude you're oh, God, oh that's what she wants to be an actor yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's like she was he she was in one production and she fell off the stage and the daughter played by actual Billy Crystal's daughter Lindsay Crystal mm-hmm. mm. you know that name Lindsay Crystal <laughs> 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 it did not, it did not uh, take the world by storm now, well she was also in uh, the C- she was also in <laughs> Mr Saturday Night. Uh, City Slickers 2, obviously. And then My Giant. Remember My oh, Giant? You, we'll oh, all remember course. My Giant when we do it eventually. <laughs> God <laughs> damn that movie, man. Wait, you couldn't get her into Forget Paris? Come on, Crystal. <laughs> I, we forgot. Come on. She was right there for When Harry Met Sally. What the hell? Come on, buddy. It was only two years prior. Please. So they're riding, you know, we, we, we do some, like, horsey stuff. And then, like, the, the first thing is, like, basically... Billy Crystal's like, oh, hey, I'm going to make some really fancy coffee because I'm a New Yorker. It's a New Yorker joke. And he's got a, a fresh coffee grinder that he he presses and spooks all the cows, right? And all the cows. Yeah. And they the cows, A, get spooked uh, and then come back and destroy the camp and ruin everybody's shit. So everyone's pissed off. And then. And also, like, this is a, I mean, look, I like this movie. I'm having a lot of fun here today, but I will tell you what. One hour and 56 minutes is unacceptable for this movie. Insane. And this fucking stampede scene that goes on for at least five to six minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, I got it, man. The camp's fucking wrecked. <laughs> Let's get on with nope, it. Nope. Oh, man. Uh, and Palance is pissed because some of the cows are missing. And he's like, you and I are going to go out and find those cows. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. And fucking Daniel Stern and Bruno Kirby think that Curly is going to kill him. Yes, this is the well, like legitimately going to murder. Yeah, exactly. I yep. would. I absolutely yeah. would think that. I mean, also <laughs> around here we get just meandering shit before we break from uh, uh, f- uh, Bruno Kirby and Daniel Stern is where Kirby's like, ooh, like trying to g- gauge if Billy Crystal would cheat on his wife. Oh yeah. Oh, because he accuses him of like flirting with Becky Galkey or whatever. Right. And his whole thing escalates to like, all right, look, 
Would you fuck an alien? <laughs> yeah, spaceship comes down. You know, no one would ever know. They're probably there to collect human semen. Who knows what they're doing with it? But wouldn't you do it? <laughs> and you know what? The UFO angle. I don't know. City Slickers 3 is apparently on the horizon. I think mm-hmm. in the desert it would be cool if you came across a UFO. You oh, know yeah. what? I'm, I'm thinking about it right now. And here's where, I, if this movie happens, here's what I bet is going on. Something, something, Daniel Stern and Billy Crystal and shit, maybe get Lovitz back for it. Something, something, because they will kill the Bruno Kirby character. Yes. And it's, we got to go do a fucking tribute thing for Ed, yada, yada. Because right. oh, okay. he's not even he's not even in the second one. That's why Lovitz is there, right? Yes. And, the, and then I Gyllenhaal think, steals an ambulance and... Um... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that would be my son just stole an ambulance. Ah, great. <laughs> but are you getting are you getting one of like Jack Palance's like shitty actor sons or like uh, Paul Palance? Is he going to show up <laughs> no. in City Slickers three? Paul just no. like a grandson or something that had ha- is well, little handsome. I bet you. I bet you anything, dude. Like it wouldn't be like a direct Palance offspring per se, but like you put a fucking uh, uh, Scott Eastwood car actor oh, in there. Sure. Yep. Something like, yep. And it's, it's, it's the like the of. grandson of Curly or yeah. If you do an older guy, maybe it's the son of Curly. Oh. Like, or yeah. get, get Frank Stallone, his Italian cousin. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Something tells me Curly was an entertaining Italian. Look, man, we're trying to tank I mean. this thing. So <laughs> this is the best way to do it. Get Frank Stallone involved. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. Anyway, they think that uh, Cur- uh, Curly's gonna fucking murder him, and you know they go out or whatever. And yeah, this is the whole they're wrapping up all these like loose stray cattle and fucking you know Jack Pounds is like, all right, throw it over and lasso him. And then like Billy Crystal's got to like demean this whole thing and be like, no, 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 like I'm just gonna get off the horse, walk over, and put it on top of his head. Yeah. And then, like, Jack Palance fucking whistles, and we have this, like, why would he hang on to this rope? Just let it go. <laughs> Just so you can well, get the trailer line of, I'm on vacation! Yeah, it's for that, and it's also to prove he's, you know, because this whole thing is, like, he's trying to be a man mm, yeah, in a way, right? Like, this yeah. is all masculinity crap. I mean, he is, yeah, I mean, he's doing very uh, uh, manly things, like talking about baseball. Talking about baseball. <laughs> talking about baseball. He does talk about uh, baseball got, a little bit too. Maybe he he gets a he he, he helps a cow get birth, uh, and, and then the cow is like quickly used as just just complete emotional manipulation. It's like threatened to die like two or three times. Right. Yep. Yep. Great. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Little baby cow coming up. Yeah. Come Billy up. Crystal also uh, worried that by camping out under the stars with Curly, it's about to turn into deliverance. Uh-huh. We're definitely getting a fucking deliverance joke. We have to do it. That's that was a joke made by somebody who has never watched Deliverance. <laughs> what about this is like deliverance? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, uh, having sex with your ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're all alone now. Like just the two people who were in deliverance. Oh wait, there were like six people. <laughs> yeah, you went down the wrong river. I mean, desert. Or... Yeah. <laughs> wow. Looks like you're gonna take out your harmonica. Oh, oh, it was a banjo in deliverance. That's right. <laughs> Let me hear you squeal like a pig. Oh, there are no pigs in the desert. It's uh, <laughs> kind of like that Eddie Perlu. A uh, short story that I like that is obscure now, but it'll be big in a couple of years. <gasps> Brokeback Mountain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a big fan of that uh, that writer. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm a vociferous reader. <laughs> <laughs> there is a great Palance line here, though, because Crystal's just fucking yip yapping, and he goes, "What? It's like rolling a cigarette or something." He's just like, "You." Uh, Make a lot of uh, smart remarks <laughs> at my expense, don't you? I'm like, he is ready to strangle yeah, this guy. <laughs> I think I'm going to send you to find that last cow at Access Chemical. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget your lucky dick. 
they actually used uh, they used the what Charles Bronson said to Billy Crystal when he offered him the role for Jack Palance's uh, lines in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! I'm dead. <laughs> you tell me how to act. I mean, I I honestly, when I read the Charles Bronson thing, I just perked up because I'm like. He, I couldn't imagine him being any cooler, but he told Billy Crystal to fuck off. Which <laughs> yeah, is pretty it's pretty, awesome. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, nice. it's pretty great, man. Pretty good one. Dude, if, if Charles Bronson told me to fuck myself, I would fucking sleep with the light on for a couple of days. Just, oh, like, yeah, you know absolutely, what, dude? man. Just to be sure. Just in case he's watching, I'm masturbating immediately. I get off the phone with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing what you told me. <laughs> you told me to fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I am. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, whatever they wind up having a nice little moment under the stars, singing "Tumble and Tumbleweeds," and Billy Crystal's playing the yeah. harmonica. <laughs> and then, of course, we got it. We got a Billy Crystal our way out of that scene, though. It's like a totally nice moment. They cut to this nice composite shot of like, you know, the the desert and the mountains and whatnot. And then it's just, you know, any show tunes? Yeah, and then the that next- it fucking ruins that moment, yep. man. And the next thing it. is the, the cow gets, uh, they find the pregnant cow and the, the the birthing scene and like, yeah, he's just like riffing and he's like, shut the fuck up and deliver the cow. <laughs> <laughs> She'll kick you and kill you and the calf and that's too much for me to carry back. <laughs> Look Great inside line. the cow. Look inside the cow now. I'm going to kill the cow. <laughs> I, thought they, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this Dude, is like- Jack Palance just sleeping in this cow. <laughs> Gotta stay warm. Take out Josh- the calf and put me in. <laughs> I'm Josh sick. Was- <laughs> Joshua still rides on a horse. I found them. Repeat, I found them. <laughs> Man, Dude. by the way, this fucking cow birth, fucking Cronenberg level body horror. Na- I know that it's nasty IRL too, but wow. Holy shit, man! There's, and it's like there's a bit of puppet and there's a bit of real life. I guess what what was the trivia saying? They had three pregnant cows on hand, like waiting for them to like give birth and do this scene or whatever, so they could get the the footage of like the actual like little calf standing up and whatnot. No, yeah, we had three on set, and uh, yeah, part of his contract, Jack Palance got to shoot all three of them. After <laughs> they were done. I don't know why he liked it. I don't understand it. But... I like watching the light leave their eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Palance. You're, you're, you're an icon. Thank you. Where's everyone going? I was gonna skin them and cut them up and grill them and have a nice time here. Watch a new rug. <laughs> the ca- the cast and crew of City Slickers running away. <laughs> so yeah, whatever. Yeah, there's this whole. Of course, like he loses his watch inside this cow. That's a joke. That's very, also very gross. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, if, if if Jack Pouts hadn't <laughs> shot the cow just because it was sick, it would have to. He would have to shoot it anyway because of what was left inside of it. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a, a nice exchange here where Billy Crystal jokingly is like, I made a cow. And Jack Palance gets in on it and goes, he looks like you. <laughs> uh, oh, add one cow minus another. Bam. Yep, it, uh, totally. uh, <laughs> mother's gone. Balance preserved. <laughs> I took him to the meat company because he's just a cow to me and they didn't mind. <laughs> That's what I call the <gasps> balance balance. <laughs> It'd be great if he just starts eating this cow like dead. <laughs> just not, not even skinning it. It's best this way. I like my hamburgers <laughs> extremely raw. <laughs> hey, Mitch, uh, did you ever <laughs> pretend you're a wolf? <laughs> He's just eating the placenta like an apple. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Damn what? it. Why don't you go back to the beans while I have a real dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so how men eat. I don't know what city slickers eat. I'm going to go see the Northmen after this. <laughs> uh, but yes, and then on the ride back, we get into some talking about ladies and uh, I love redheads, uh, which is disturbing. And uh-huh. basically, this is the very important scene which I guess got him an Oscar, which is basically him. And it's a nice scene where it's just like, he yeah, does a he good does. job. I'm not, I'm not being yeah. a dick. He's just like, you know, you gotta, it's a, it, it, you, you worry about stuff too much. You gotta worry about one thing. 
And it's like, what's the one thing? It's like, that's for you to figure out. <laughs> and the one thing is, it's, it's, when am I going <laughs> to kill you? <laughs> yeah. Ah, you'll be uh, looking over your shoulder the rest of your life. <laughs> Murder is a good thing to focus on. <laughs> I've been doing it all my life. What's the one thing I'm going to kill you with? A candlestick? A rope? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll push you off a cliff. <laughs> I did it in the study. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed. Yeah, take that, Colonel Mustard. <laughs> Jack Fallon's died the same year as Bruno Kirby. How it's hard that is. Yeah, man. Yep. It's going to suck to be sitting on set and being like, I'm going to outlive that guy by a lot. And it just didn't right. happen. And because yep. God takes our, our best first. I mean, Bruno mm-hmm. Kirby, what a fucking great guy. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But so that's, that's uh, kind of the big thing. And like that he learns yeah. that and they kind of get together and like the next that night like and again it's kind of amazing like that night he's just basically like kirby's a great uh, uh you know not kirby uh uh curly's a great guy you gotta come meet him and he's like he's just sitting off in the distance and he's fucking dead and he's out of the movie yep yeah, yeah just dead uh, you know and there's still 50 minutes left folks i hope this you like shock. more city slickers without the <laughs> oscar winning performance this really was a shock to me that he there's so much left after he goes, I assumed there was only like twenty minutes left. Well, when he yeah. goes, the, I wonder what uh, his nuts. his screen time altogether is. It's probably pretty low because prior to his death, we even get this ice cream off. What what I, the uh, what's his name? Uh, Josh Mostel as Barry can name any ice cream for any meal. Oh right, he could pair it with like that your dessert after whatever meal you had, and but this goes on. It from goes on fashion way too long because these guys. They're trying to make them characters, but they're kind of not. They're there oh. for that initial joke, and they kind of don't matter after that. Well, look, all fat guys have special food power. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a knowledge of thing that we all know. We don't talk about it, but <laughs> this guy, he has a special food power. It's to match the, the fucking ice cream with uh, the right food, and this eats up 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, because we need, we need like Mitch uh, searching his mind for how to stump them or whatever, so I'm it's like, like sea bass, potatoes on gratin, and asparagus. And of course, he nails it with rum raisin being the pair. I've this- always liked the the end of all this of Billy Crystal laughing at them and being like, Well, how the fuck you just fucking woohooed each yeah. other? Like, how do you know you're right? You know, and it's like 1700 retail outlets across North America. That's how. Do you have restaurants with them? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, 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 Ben, just ben Jerry's has some, you know, they have sit down stuff. Yeah. Oh, do they? I, I've never been they, to a what, restaurant. They don't, do they have savory? Do they bring you a charcuterie board? No, no, no. No, it's it's like an ice cream <laughs> yeah, shop. Yeah, no, exactly. Thing. You go, like I, a basket I, rob. Chris was trying to say, like, are you serving a steak at this place <laughs> that you would have an idea of pairing anything? No, it's, it's, it's ice cream only counter service stuff, but you'll find. Find some that have like seating areas and shit like that. Sure, you know? uh, but to, you know, no, there's not like a waiter bringing you fucking yeah. a blooming onion before your ice cream. But then yeah. this is where let's get Curly in on this action. They find him dead, and they bury him like he, a dog. Oh yeah, just like a dog in the fucking ground. I do love Daniel Stern being like, "The man ate bacon at every meal." <laughs> I think about that line yes. a lot. Well, you, 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 do that. you can't do that. Yes, exactly. Which rule? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and then fucking Cookie's got a good line here, like because uh, Billy Crystal suggests, like, "Oh, Cookie, why don't you give a little bit of a eulogy here?" And he says something really quick, and then it, they're looking at him, and he's like, "Well, what else is there? I got chicken burning." <laughs> he had. Yeah. <laughs> and then sort of the next movement is Cookie, and because it, it happens really quick, like Cookie gets drunk and like basically destroys the camp yet again which you've already seen happen um and i think it's important to talk just really quick we don't have to talk about the scene itself because it's just like whatever like more of the drama stuff but it's this kind of like whiplash shit you feel watching this movie because the scene right before this is the three of them doing all of the like best days oh, and yeah, worst sure, days yeah. oh, God. and bruno kirby they all give nice monologues here. And Bruno Kirby's is about like him t- standing up to his abusive father. Yada, yada, yada. That's my best day. And fucking Daniel Stern says, what's your worst day? And he goes, same day and rides off. And you're like, wow, that was all really heavy and devastating. And then it's like, now Cookie's drunk and all the food's <laughs> exactly. falling out. Yeah. It is a dramedy, but it, it is just sort of, it's more of a, 
Uh, speaking of ice cream, it's more of a Neapolitan style, you know, chocolate, <laughs> vanilla, and and uh, and, and uh, strawberry kind of a thing. Like it's just we cut between the and the delineation is so severe. Yep. Well, I mean, it is. It's literally a Woody Allen western. Mm-hmm. Like, what would that? What would those? Like, I, I can hear the pitch meeting. Like, literally, like, why don't we take Woody Allen and westerns, which are doing terribly right now, <laughs> put them together? We got the Billy Crystal headlining. We can't lose. But the funny thing is, it's important to specify, I think, like, Hannah and her sister's crimes and misdemeanors kind of Woody Allen. Yes. Oh, this is like Hannah and her Snyder's era. (laughs) Excellent. Hannah and her six steers. (laughs) Interiors of a cow's vagina. Oh man! So one of the one of these fucking uh, other pervert ranch hands there, he does kind of a good line that I always laugh at. He's drunk, the old shithead. Yeah. I mean, what else are you gonna do t- with this job? I would be getting drunk all the time. If of course, mm-hmm. like, and you have to be. If I was Cookie, I'd be getting drunk all the time, or I'd be skipping over and milking the good cow by the rich guy's house. <laughs> there you go. But also, like, if you were to like. Once the old man, the boss of it, dies and you're left with these two guys that are fucking dangerous, you got to be like, you know, fucking show's over, folks. Let's just go back. Let's fight. Let's go to a town. Call somebody. Hey, give this guy a proper burial and call his twin brother who exists, you know? <laughs> and no, or, no, let's, how about a shallow grave that's unmarked besides this rickety cross? That's what he would love. And like, yeah, it's, it's not the, it, I mean, we're pretending it's the old West, but like, yeah, like civilization is like two miles away. I don't know about that, or man. T- There's some fucking vast stretches of this place. And the point they make though, is like, they can't just fucking leave because they're in like a really like desert part of everything. Mm. And all the fucking cows are going to die. Well, yeah, this all goes back to them hiring only criminal maniacs <laughs> to work for them. <laughs> like, that Great is, point. This is really where that's not paying off because J- JR and, and Tinky or whatever his name is. Uh, <laughs> TR they, and uh, Jeff, Jeff, I think. There, yeah. there you go. No, JR and Tinky, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so JR and Tinky, go ahead. The, the, JR and Tinky, they're next, like, immediately, not, like, Literally two scenes after fucking Curly is dead, they are holding a fucking gun to this little cow's head. <laughs> oh, dude, like, they're putting it in its mouth. L O L from this guy in, over here, oh, man. So absolutely. Good. Oh, so absolutely. And, and this this calf is fucking adorable. I was totally in love with it last night, as I was as a kid. I was like, this is the cutest little thing in the world. But putting a gun inside of its mouth, I was <laughs> slapping my knee, man. Do you, and then the dude he's doing it he's fucking like making this fucking little baby cow lick the <laughs> fucking barrel of this gun dude and he's like he's taunting the rest of them because they're all scared in a tent and he's like do you like calf brains because <laughs> basically they get drunk after like so uh cookie is uh it breaks his leg and ben and steve who have done nothing this entire time uh they offer to leave the movie yeah so we can leave the movie they, with they volunteer to not be in the movie and anymore. it's like okay so we'll just and the rest of us will go on with the with the what do you call it there with the with the expedition and they find <laughs> How about you dig cookie. back up that body and take it with cookie <laughs> exactly could would you find uh and or like or, or do we know exactly where we buried him we don't um yeah, but also, been, I like the I like the trend of what would you call them, Tinky and Je- well, Jeffy? What was it? Jr. Jr. And, and Tinky, right? All right, yeah. those guys. I love. They were like, oh, co- like Cookie's drunk again. That piece of shit. Uh, anyway, let's get immediately drunk, just like him. Yes, exactly. The same day. Totally. Say that's there, a good idea. There is the decent gag of when the food crate goes off the cliff when cookie breaks his legs that the horses are buried and we do a cut yes. to two more graves hey, that is funny, funny. Well, he's like, well, skyrocket yes. buttercup because it starts the same way he's like what can you say about skyrocket and buttercup but it's, it's a very funny <laughs> that's joke that's right yeah, yeah. Uh, uh so yeah ben and steve pack up cookie let's get some characters out of here <laughs> did he have a that, smiley face on his ass when he was doing this whole thing he, he definitely did okay. yeah probably written in his own feces because sure. the man's insane right <laughs> okay uh, i just wanted to double check that <laughs> I wasn't just seeing things. No. And so Billy Crystal tries to stand up for Norman the calf here. And, you know, he's trying to, like, get the guys to calm down. And so he one guy calls him a pansy ass bastard. Mm -hmm. 
and then is followed up immediately with the other guy calling him a shit nose little yeah. uh, F slur. Mm. That's what- um, and then here you go. You know what? As if the movie was like, we're sorry. We know that that was bad here. Can we make it up to you? Here's a shot of Billy Crystal getting punched in the face. <laughs> yes. By the way, only PG-13 <laughs> with that language, folks. Mm-hmm. Wow. The toilet talk, dude. Unbelievable. Terrible. Well, Bill and Ted were saying it all the time. I don't know. <laughs> that's, <true>. that's actually <laughs> that's true. They fucking love that word. Uh, oh, but, but this was so bloody. It should be an R, honestly. It was horrific when that that calf was birthed. They that was Cronenbergian, an dude. That was from the Brood. Was, that that was disgusting. Terrifying. It was just, Sam Raimi's City Slickers is really it's a return to form. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, did you see the new City Slickers? You guys, Raimi got to Raimi again. <laughs> God damn it! Oh, that that means. Uh, oh yeah, he just aped his other work, and there was a zombie, and it got it mm-hmm. <laughs> for six minutes. <laughs> Yes, uh, for, uh, for uh, five and a half minutes, it was uh, quite rainy. <laughs> um, and uh, but so Daniel Stern gets in on it, man, and here he's ready to go to hell tonight. He's fucking, oh, dude, getting this dude's gun, fucking putting it in his face. My father-in-law is a bully. <laughs> yeah, I, this is so close to turning into a fucking Michael Haneke movie. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. just like any moment, that'd be now, great. Could, like, let he's this got- fucking rip. The thing is, he's got nothing to live for, man. And I think that's dangerous. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I lost my wife, my job. I got some rash from making in the bushes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's the guy that actually has a character development and growth. And here's him trying to be, you know, he's being a man and whatever. It's it's as close as Daniel Stern ever got to performing Michael Douglas's character from falling down. <laughs> like, cause he's ready to fucking snap. Oh yeah, dude. dude we're going to hell tonight. And- but <laughs> it just reeks of like, Phil should be the protagonist. What is Absolutely. just, just yep. to have Mitch make quips. Yeah, totally. Billy Crystal got punched out in two seconds. Daniel Stern saved the day. I, and Stern pulls this off. I don't think Crystal could pull this off. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, no. Can you imagine? That's no. what I think that's uh, maybe pr- pr- the problem is if Moranis was here again, I don't think it's as a commanding a performance. I think it's I much agree. more comical. Yeah. Totally right. Like, oh, yeah, I, I lost my wife in my house. You know what I mean? I don't it's like not- bullies. Exactly. And look, even if he's got <laughs> the just gun. big bully again. Yes, exactly. I... <laughs> But it's amazing because it takes an even weirder turn. So he does that whole thing, and like they're like, he doesn't kill the guy. That's the joke. And then he's like, now you two assholes, sleep it off. But then he goes back in the tent, and he's got the loaded gun. And this goes Hell on yeah. for a while, and it's like, this dude's a family annihilator, man. Totally, oh, yeah. dude. He's petting every fucking round in that chamber. It's dude. really Just something. gently making sure all the girls are comfortable in their bed <laughs> before we fucking set out into the night, man. Tell, tell the tell the uh, the ex wife and, and, and Yardley Smith to go see their parents when when he comes back. Make sure that they're not around when he comes back with this gun. Oh, we, yep. we should, it's gonna get bad. We should also say that they, this movie does sort of chick it out that Yardley Smith actually wasn't pregnant. She just lost Mr. Period, and you know, eventually. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they just kind of chick well, it out of that whole that. thing. But so that, that, I feel like that's also to be like, see, Phil can now really start yes. over, and now he can have freedom. <laughs> that's what Becky that Galky. She's right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but he starts having this breakdown about working at the grocery store. It's fucking rough. Man. <laughs> it's it's also scene. interesting. Thank God he's got his buddies, fucking Ed Mitch there. Just the idea. Also, he's like he knows a gun so well because he has one at the grocery store. And I'm just yep. thinking, like, and if anyone's listening to this at, that works at a grocery store, do not risk your life for the cash register. Definitely not. What is no. that? Absolute fucking loot. I gotta not. tell you, there's. I mean, this episode's long enough, but I'm not gonna go into all of any of them. <laughs> Please, but no, no, go do it all. Do it all. My dad, you know, managed a couple grocery stores in New York and has some like taxi driver esque stories about defending <laughs> the register. Wow, yeah, it's really, really, it's really wow. something. Your dad uh, ever save a child prostitute? <laughs> <laughs> How many confirmed kills, though? <laughs> Not the, none that I know of, but just like he would, he would get into it, man. You're taking that money from the register? Nah, uh Not on his turn. Really? Oh. So he would stand. He would. He would. He mm-hmm. he foiled some robberies. Huh? He, uh, to, to hear him tell it, absolutely. Wow. 
Huh. That's incredible. That's I bet you, though, if Sybil Shepherd had ever done it, he'd let her have it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story. My uncle was a taxi driver briefly in Chicago, and some guy pulled a gun on him and gave him, and he just gave over the money. And that was his last day as a taxi driver. It's a great that idea, dude. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, did he leave on his own recognizance, or did Danny DeVito fire him? <laughs> I think, the or way, the Danny DeVito equivalent of his would, taxi garage. I, you know what? He says he left on his own, but I think Danny DeVito fired him. <laughs> I prefer that version. And got it. The best news of, of the movie is uh, both all of these, both those scumbags leave in the night. But now it's like, oh, oh right. no, what are we gonna do? They left us. Uh, and you know, this is when everybody decides to, you know, we'll just go, oh. we'll we'll ride into town and fuck the cows, except what? for Bruno Kirby who wants to. Bring the herd in. <laughs> uh, so, oh yeah, but so Phil gets in on it. Stern is like, "I'm down." Bruno Kirby, like, "I will help you. We'll do the fucking cattle ranch." You know, we're not about to let all these animals die. So, like, Ben and Jerry and Becky Gelke and Billy Crystal are all gonna go go to town. And then, like, <clears throat> so I I'd, I'd love to watch all this. those guys go to town, dude. That'd be fun. <laughs> oh, oh fuck it totally fuck yeah. talk about 31 flavors <laughs> uh <laughs> wrong um, ice cream oh, now what ice cream do you pair after human semen <laughs> <laughs> probably like a shaved coconut mm, yeah that's i guess good. yeah that makes that makes sense you, you definitely need to go sweet you want to stay away from like the salty caramel uh pretzel stuff you know yeah and ass yeah. to mouth, you want to go uh, pistachio. Rocky for sure. Road. <laughs> Rocky Road, even better. <laughs> it's a new uh, flavor we're developing called Hershey Highway. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, but I hate when movies do this, right? Where it's like, yeah, all right, we're all going to go this way. Good luck, you crazy guys. And then, like, two seconds pass. And then it's like, ba ba da ba, Billy Crystal's returned. Yes. Like, but All right. Like, how about like they get into peril and he saves them, not just like they went down the road half mile and he changed uh, his mind. Well, no, uh, excuse me. His 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 vest is much nicer. It, well, and, he and also, he's also so, wearing he's wearing Jack Palance's hat. That fucking that's stolen valor. Grave robber. That? <laughs> so clearly he knows everything now and he is Jesus himself. Yes. Jesus, <laughs> Lord of all the cowboys. It's true. He's, he's come back <laughs> in immaculate visage. You know what I mean? He's changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's been true. three days. He is risen on a horse. Honestly, they should just have Jack Pounds come back as Curly in the end. That would be awesome. <laughs> Please, yes. I fell asleep and I woke up under some rocks. <laughs> I was in a cave. <laughs> you really gotta check someone's pulse before you bury them. Is there any uh, Roman centurions around? <laughs> um, it's oh, and also he's like, it's a real, it's such fucking hack shit. He's like, oh, sorry, I'm late, Norman. Tra so much traffic. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, <laughs> we love that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and like here is a thing where like i don't i don't know what this one sequence serves but like yes one the episode is long enough but also this movie has fucking been long enough the whole thing of like this they just must have thought it was a funny bit daniel stern and billy crystal going back and forth about how you record stuff from your tv to the vcr oh, it, it, and was, then, it like, was the style of the time my friend that's yes, what we did i think this was yeah. a uh, a humdinger of a riff in the era Mm -hmm. it's wild shit though that, that it just the movie it, y you wouldn't know it was moving if it weren't for the horses doing the walking the only thing yeah. about it that's kind of interesting is it's it sounds and feels like all those really sensitive scenes because like i just don't think i'm ever going to be able to do it. it it sounds like it's going to be about impotence i think is the joke because it's like i you know it, it has it ever happened to right, you right, is, right. It, is it like you know does it, but steve yeah you're totally right but that's like Three lines yes. of a sixty-seven line. <laughs> no, bit. It, 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 <laughs> it goes on forever. Even Bruno Kirby gets too tired of it. That that turn is fucking funny, but then they're literally just because then they try to. The, then the joke becomes he's frustrated at how long they're taking. Yes. But it's like, so's the audience. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of these lines are. Uh, I mean, and the way that a lot of this does feel like 
certain scenes just like there's no flow to the movie itself there's just like scene scene things happen scene. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like exactly. that things like that i think it is there's like a sitcom-y pace that, like yep. there, oh, this absolutely. was the beginning of this turning oh absolutely uh, big movies are very sitcom and this feels like a sitcom i watched uh, uh, the setup the siskel and ebert of this movie and they praise specifically this this moment of the the recording on the vcr talk or whatever oh because because fucking Gene and Raj had a fight about the same thing. <laughs> but they actually they had one good point is like Bonnie gets zero to do in this movie. Absolutely. And oh, yeah. If they could have used oh. her as a sounding board for some of their problems with women. Uh, yeah. I mean, that they are maybe me. But look, she does get to be the prize that Daniel Stern wins for not killing himself. <laughs> So you know what? So you know what? She's something. She's something That's, out there. See, folks, it, it might seem like it might seem like things are hard, but stick it out because Supergirl <laughs> might be right around the corner. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Squirt. Indeed. Uh, so the big here's the big action scene that ends the movie. Yeah. Right? Is they got to cross the river. There's a big storm. There's no way around. There's no way but through. And it's where. We got all our guys navigating all the horses and whatnot. Everything's good except for, whoops, Norman, of course, is drowning. Billy Crystal runs after him. And this is the big, the guys have to rely on each other yes. to save, you know, and everybody's working together and we're all best boomer friends and whatnot. <laughs> Something that has just like bridged the divide throughout Hollywood is we love seeing animals in distress. <laughs> yeah. It's just something that audiences yeah. eat up and I don't understand. I'm like, this is five minutes of a cow almost dying. Well, they, put this calf it's fucking the, torture. they put this calf through the paces, dude. They put a gun in <laughs> yeah. its mouth. They are oh, fucking yeah. drowning this thing. Its mother gets <laughs> shot in front of it. It's like a fucking baby Bambi. animal. You yeah. can mistreat all you want in a way, but it, it, it reminds folks, you know, like it's oh, what's better than kids? Oh, cute little animals. Yeah, yeah. So that and is they, a huge stake. To do that and just put them in danger all the time. Yeah. And, and, and the audience was coming true. <laughs> I mean, I do. That is essentially like the beginning of Beethoven is like that. A lot of this shit is like that, I guess. <laughs> oh, the whole Beethoven. thing of Beethoven, oh, Beethoven, Beethoven is, a, is I mean, an animal in peril. Like, the, right? Isn't the whole thing like they want to uh, shoot that dog? Miguel the... Ferrer wants to shoot him in the head. They want to yeah, shoot yeah. that dog in the head. Uh, uh, yeah, or some type of medical experiment. I think was also supposed to be perpetrated on the dog. I rewatched it after <laughs> uh, Grodin passed, and I hadn't seen it in a thousand years. And did it hold up? I haven't seen it. In well, I don't know if it hold up, held up back then. I, I I'm just checking my uh, my review on Letterbox. I gave it two and a half stars. So I I don't know what that yeah. means. I don't know we'll, what, we'll... what state I was in. We'll be doing it at some point and, and <laughs> highlighting Grodin's fantastic performance. All right, here's listen to this review I wrote. You'll you'll forget that the movie Beethoven is about people trying to kidnap a big dog to test a new bullet on its skull. <laughs> that's a, yes, that's, yes, that's a bullet. It's yeah. Yeah, crazy. Right. <laughs> that's amazing. Best biggest laugh of the movie, by the way, is when Billy Crystal is going down this river mm. and he's trying to protect this cat. There you go. And you just see Billy Crystal get slammed against a rock. <laughs> Ooh, and he gets a little out of real <laughs> oof, too, which is great. Yeah, oh, it's kind of great. It's Very a good nice. reaction. <laughs> and uh, anyway. But, you know, so the, then, yes, uh, Daniel Stern uh, pulls him in, and he almost falls, but the Bruno Kirby pulls him in, and then we're all, like, on the side of the cliff, like, wow, that was something. Also, how is he holding yep. this? I mean, I know it's water, but how are you holding this fucking cow, dude? I don't know. That thing's got to weigh like, 150 pounds. Well, when you get Curly's hat, you get super strength. Got it. Oh. <laughs> it's a um, helping you out down from hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. The devil, the devil just... gave me power. <laughs> <laughs> just try it out. You can bench press a Buick. <laughs> hey, Mitch, hell was full. I'm going to ride with you now. Oh, I have to. When hell is full, I walk the earth. Dude, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but the second movie literally starts with Billy Crystal thinking that he is seeing the ghost of Curly all around New York <laughs> yeah. City. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I forgot that. I forgot literally everything about the sequel, but I've definitely seen that a few times. Oh, great. Because, Ed's new trip yeah. has taken us to this new little, little shack, and here's the Necronomicon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, Necronomicon. Ex Mortis, <laughs> the Book of the Dead. You've... Uh, un 
unleashed a Kadarian. <laughs> You're as dumb as that uh, Professor Nobi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So whatever, man. They bring all the fucking cows back to the ranch. Uh, you have the great, great gobs of goose shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, you are paying what Bill, Bill will get for that one, man. Whew. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like you got the guys singing the fucking Bonanza Ugh. theme song, which is equal parts nice and annoying. It's, it's boomer shit, dude. Loving it. Of course. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. But it's it, this little turn where it's like, because I think like Ben and Steve, who've been outed for the movie, are back. And they're like, you know, we'd like to ride these ca- cows back to, to Arizona for you. And it's like, well, that ain't going to happen there, boys. We sold them to the meat company. And I'm like, yeah, and it's such it's a bizarre deflating complication that doesn't mean anything. And it's not really. Yeah. The only thing is, that, you know, he saves Norman, but it doesn't do anything for the movie. It doesn't. It just makes it so that the end it's all to service the joke of the end of the movie. Billy Crystal puts a cow in a mini. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise you could just do it the other way where he'd be like, all right, there, dentist, father and son. Yeah, that, that'll be all right. We can do that. And uh, we'll take you all up and. Norman's gonna walk back with us exactly. too, and then that part is like Billy Crystal just has to say goodbye to the cute little cat. Exactly. Like, but they want to have a joke where Billy Crystal shoves a huge animal in a minivan. But you can yeah, do they're that. working backwards on that one. But you can't do that. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you can't do that anyway. It's like I didn't want to let, let go of Norman, so I brought him with me. Ba ba da ba da. Well, that's <sighs> the end of the movie. I, I, I will say I like this that's, version. That's true, Steve. You're totally right. That's true. I like this version much better than their original version which they cut and it's all black and white footage and Norman has a red jacket on that's <laughs> all of a sudden red out of nowhere for some reason. Come on. <laughs> Why? Like, I, <laughs> Billy Crystal saying you could have saved more cows. Yeah, yeah. I, need their li- I need their little hooves. <laughs> that watch I left in that other calf. I could have saved so many more if I had it. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. hell! Wow. Well, that, or at the end of this movie should be like you know, oh, uh, Billy, you know, because Billy Crystal. That's it. Then they go to the airport. And Billy Crystal gets met by his shit-eating family, but they're all eating McDonald's, and he starts throwing oh. up. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> just, they're all, and it's just like you get like real extreme close-ups of like Jake Gyllenhaal just chewing on a double <laughs> cheeseburger, and he's like, ah. Oh. ah <laughs> That'd be cool if, like, his character grew or changed whatsoever, but that doesn't really happen. Yeah, but because no. it's like these specific cows, the cows I know I'm sad about, but any yes. other cows, fuck them. It doesn't pay off in one way or another. Like, if again, if he comes out a vegetarian, then that makes sense that they would do that moment. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, right. Or I'm never eating right. cow. I'm, I'm never eating. You know, honey, we're never having steak again. Like, you know what I mean? Like something like that would mean something but other than that then you're just sentencing these cows to death for no reason <laughs> yes i mean and bring your special boy back you, one thing i'll give this movie is is i guess it's trying to have a tether to reality yes we eat cows y- yes we have confrontations about impregnating cashiers at parties like, <laughs> but, you know Some the of real us do. world crashes into this and uh, yes well i think this reveals what Billy Crystal's whole promise. So the, uh, the end of the movie, he brings, he comes back. He says, uh, "They, uh, the people who survived this this herd, uh, get together." And Billy Crystal is like, "You know what? Uh, Jack Palance told me, you know, there's one thing and one thing you gotta focus on in this world, and it's my kids. The pe- those pieces of shit I haven't talked about at all. <laughs> right. That was this the one trip. thing he thought about while he was in the river trying to save a calf. Seems like you're yes. thinking about the calf." Sure. In your own life, maybe, maybe your own life. Who knows? You know, maybe I, I'm crazy. I I I love my daughter because she's 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 sweet. And so, that boy creeps me right out. Creeps me right, <laughs> right out. I mean, you look at him. Look at here's a it's a family photo last last Christmas. Look at it. It's like a live action cartoon character. It's disgusting. It's like nocturnal animals, but a child. <laughs> I've justified it. I, I've justified it to myself as a buy one get one free type of thing. Because you know she's definitely worth it, but he's you know I could take or leave. I can easily see my son creeping around car accidents, <laughs> taking pictures of stuff, <laughs> like a little velvet buzzsaw. Ew! You, Ew! You know, until, until, until we figure this out, we're putting him in a bubble. He's gonna be the bubble boy now. Okay. <laughs> uh, quick question before we wrap this up, because that's the end of the movie uh back on the ranch when they're hanging out they're back in like 
their city slicker clothes, just talking about like what they're going to do. And like Daniel Stern's starting over and Bruno Kirby's going to go get Kim pregnant. Oh, yeah, or whatever. dude. Raw dog. Yeah. Did anybody notice? Uh, is Daniel Stern drinking a cult 45 in I that didn't scene? See it. Oh, I wish I, I did. missed it. It, he's got a tall something. Dude, if he did, awesome. he's earned it. Good like, for him. Honestly, yeah, Definitely. Honestly, he's, he's earned it. But oh, what I think this cow thing proves is that what Billy Crystal needed, he needed to get a dog. <laughs> yes. This all could <laughs> yeah. have been averted if he had gotten a dog for the family. Yeah. That was because you bring home. First of all, you think you're going to help your marriage bringing home this cow? No. You think oh, that's that? Dude, do you, do you think you're, you're walking into a. To, to a happy wife with this fucking cow and whatever you're gonna have to feed this fucking thing on Roosevelt Island. Yes, he yeah. wants to keep it in the den, which little, little little rich guy here having a fucking den. <laughs> but yes, having the cow in the house, you could have just had a fucking dog, like a mangy. A Curly has a dog; it helps him herd the fucking cattle. The dog is alone yep. now. You take it home to your stupid kids. There He's you go, enough. dude. Well, I uh, bet you know uh, it's. <laughs> Little little Norman's doing great, but uh, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal died of parasites. I guess uh, Norman just had them. <laughs> Damn totally. shame. Damn the, shame. This ending is so full of twisted fucking shit. When they're at the airport coming back and Bruno Kirby's like, oh, next time the North Pole or whatever. Yeah. It's like, haha, right. joke. And Billy Crystal's like, oh, okay, but next Tuesday, coffee and cake. And they're yep. just getting together for coffee and cake. That's what people do. Yeah, people just do to chat. Well. Here's the thing, dude. Steve, listen, it's Steve before- Chundin, that's what people do. <laughs> you, uh-huh. you meet up with your friends for coffee and cake? No, but I, I'd be, I'd well, be for coffee. I, I, I certainly didn't get the invite for this coffee and cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing that happens less because coffee we're much cake. more connected through the texting. And shit. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. No, coffee makes sense. I just thought the cake element was, was yeah. uh, distracting. I'll tell you too. this. I'll tell you this. I've never, I've never had cake with Steve Sada. No, 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 that that's, there. I feel like I've never had cake out Chris. of the house unless it's like a, a real big to do. Chris, don't tell them about our cake dates. I fucking knew no. it. I fucking knew it. First the, the trailer game. I was this. keeping my mouth. I want to be very clear about something. I was keeping my mouth shut. I, I, I wasn't <laughs> talking about any cake dates, I, and that was it. <laughs> I thought I was whispering, and no one could hear me, but Chris, no, no you, you're out of your mind. <laughs> You've been uh, doing this for over 10 years, Steve. Chris Cabin's cake days. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out, because we always point out inaccuracy, geographical stuff in New York City. I will say, if you take to believe, if you take to believe that they flew into the Westchester County Airport, oh, yeah. they would indeed be driving that direction over the uh, 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 Triborough Bridge into Astoria to go down, what was that, fucking uh, 21st Street Yes, and turn there, onto Roosevelt Island. Yes, there is a little bridge down there by 21st Street yep. and like 36th or 5th or something. Yeah, 36th Avenue, because they don't let you drive fucking cars on there. It's all a parking Well, garage. no, you can you can drive a car on there. It's li- it's limited, I think, though, isn't it? Um, or maybe permit or something? Maybe. I don't, I don't really know. doesn't matter. Nobody cares about any of this. Chris, let's not talk about this at our next cake date. <laughs> let's I, I, talk I, I, about I, I, something else. So again, Roosevelt Island, great place, accessible by car, subway, <laughs> and this little fancy little gondola thing, which honestly is pretty fun. If if you're ever in New York City, ride it wa- there and then get right back on and go right back to Manhattan. Yeah, come here and get COVID on the Spider-Man people mover. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I'm going to say, let's just move it to our pie night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, now, man. That is, no, no, that, that's going to devastate me. Pie, I'm a pie guy. <laughs> I pie and coffee. Saturday night's all right for pie night. <laughs> All right. So anyway, man, that is fucking city slickers. We'll go around the horn here. Any final thoughts and recommendations? Eric says, Oh, um, very, I guess, very light recommend towards a no. There's definitely uh charm to this movie. There's stuff going on. I think it's over long. I don't really think it all necessarily comes together the way it should. So it's just, a, it's a, it's a light recommend because the cast kind of carries it. There you go. Uh, Chris Cabin. This thing is janky as shit. <laughs> no, absolutely do not watch it. This thing, it's just like a bunch of, like I said, it's just cobbled together. And the first 20 minutes are supposed to inform the rest of the movie, I am I suppose. 
but they don't really like other than they're upset guys they could be upset guys anyway right. uh i just kind of didn't connect with anything this time around i i remember a lot of the scenes like verbatim right. uh but i really don't understand all the baseball talk <laughs> like there's no real like insight to like what I have to change in my life or anything like that. And maybe I'm asking too much of the movie called City Slickers. But Probably. still, still, if you're going to you know, bite off half of the Woody Allen cookie, I want you to do the other half, too. Oh, uh, who's eating my cookies? <laughs> <laughs> Soon here, are you in my cookies? Good Lord. So uh, after that, uh, uh, yes, a big no. Uh, Steve said I'm close to Eric on a light recommend. And I do think. Because this cast, top to bottom, is so much fucking fun. You know what I mean? David yeah. Paymer, Josh Mistel, you know, uh, Tracy Walter, Jack Pal. It's just, it's just so much fun. And, like, obviously the top, the three leads are a lot of fun to watch together, even though it does get grating and it is jangly as fuck. And you find me a 90-minute version of this uh, movie or a 90-minute version of this episode, you're better off. But <laughs> I don't, you know, I just feel like this is... Uh, there's 20 minutes that could have come off here. It's any anywhere you wanted it to go. Yeah. Look, I'll just say, first of all, the episode is so long <laughs> because Eric is back from Top Pod. Yes, it's true. So mm-hmm. we're, we're just training. thrilled to have him back. Uh, I will say, I'm going to recommend this movie. I know it's jangly as fuck, and a lot of it's probably nostalgia. But, like, yeah, Banger cast has a lot of good moments. Yes, it's one of those movies where, like, it doesn't feel as much of a smooth story as it is just scenes kind of connected by stuff but like there are some bits that just have stayed with me for fucking over 30 years now watching this movie i guess right um crazy (laughs) uh so yeah i don't know recommend whatever and fucking stay tuned for legend of curly's gold because that is some fucking dog shit city (laughs) uh that is gonna do it uh for this edition of we hate movies if you want more uh movie and tv related chit chat gang of course head over to patreon.com slash we hate movies we got a lot of shit going on including big bad obi pod kenobi us talking about the new disney plus kenobi program uh what else we just did the uh a talking cat commentary is out that's right holy shit oh, that's really we've something. got jurassic park coming out this month uh on yeah. as our we love movies episode a big boy on that one which is so much fucking fun uh who yeah. we got for the gleep glossary this month Eric? oh the gleep glossary now if you have listened to our george r binks episode on the gleep glossary jar jar binks's father you'll know that i hinted at this steve because you brought oh. him up the look sir droids guy God, the stormtrooper yes. that says that davin felth we'll be talking about davin felth on Love the that. june edition of gleek glossary and somehow that entry uh, uh, is like, what, 700 pages of this guy, real robust <laughs> life, probably. Somehow it returned. Yes. No, it is. Uh, it, it'll be fun. I don't think it's that long, but I, there is a short story about this stormtrooper that said, look, sir, droids in um, <laughs> one of the uh, tales of books. I think it might be Mos Eisley. So enjoy. Folks. There we go. How's that? Uh, and of course, on the main feed, the show will continue uh, next Tuesday. A brand spanking new episode. Steve, uh, what's the chit chat about that? Uh, we're going to Dog Shit City, where I lost my gold. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> I just love that idea so much. Dog Shit yeah. City. No, but we are close to Dog Shit City because we're going to the Expendables too. Look at that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Expendables hey too. You got uh, JCVD as the bad guy. I mm-hmm. think honestly, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not crazy about those movies. It might be my my favorite Expendables movie. Ooh. Uh, and of course, by the way, we don't talk about this a lot on the air. It's always in the Big Daddy Dispatch and whatnot. But be sure to check out the We Hate Movies uh, merch store. Head over to uh, whmpodcast.com. Uh, click on that merch tab. It'll take you to our T Public store where we've got some new designs, fellas. Is that right? That is right. We got the uh, <laughs> the Mingo t shirt is finally premiered. If you are yeah. a Melrow 210 listener, we have multiple now t shirts for Melrow. <laughs> yes, we have at least two, yes. which is amazing. That's right. Uh, so check all that stuff out. A lot of cool designs. Uh, you know, a lot of them, of course, by including the new Mingo uh, uh, T-shirt. Uh, our good friend Felipe Sobrero. So check out that stuff. Check out all the other great uh, designs on the site. Uh, and you know, it's a good way to uh, advertise the show a little bit. Yeah. You know, you walk into your grandmother's house. She's like, <laughs> "What's that on your jacket?" 
And you tell grandma, and then, you know, <laughs> she's hip to the show. Hell yeah. And then and she also listens. tell grandma to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash we hate movies. Let's get those numbers up, folks. That's right, gang. Uh, so until next week with The Expendables 2, I'm Andrew Jupiter. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.